No. <laughs> that hurts. I know. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order. It's 201. Public comments? I know, but it says, oh. Roll call, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Ms. Snyder. Ms. Matoye. Mostly here. Ms. Floor. Here. <laughs> Ms. Black. Ms. Yelsey. Here. Ms. Anderson. Here. Ms. Bartow. Ms. Snell. Here. Dr. Navarro. Here. Now, are there any yes, public comments? Parts. No public comments. So, <laughs> da, 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 da. okay, we are going to, uh, we are going to recess our meeting into closed session. I did it lighter because we didn't have to have. Good evening. Whoops. Good evening, everyone. Of course, our computers have gone dead. Um, welcome to our regular meeting. Um, I'm calling it back to order again. And who's up? Who's on board? Okay, perfect. We will have a moment of reflection and the flag salute led by... Thank you, yes. <laughs> Caroline. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, I need a motion for the adoption of the agenda. Second. Second. Okay, it was moved by Mrs. Yelsey, seconded by Mrs. Bartow. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and then we have approved adoption of the minutes of October 7th and October 29th. So move. Moved by Mrs. Black, seconded? I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Bartow. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you, both carries. Introduction of new staff. Okay, uh, well, you'll notice that our HR department is a little short today. Uh, uh, Leona's out on school business. Uh, but we do have the Honorable Dr. D'Agostino, who's gonna introduce a <laughs> new member of his team. Dr. D'Agostino. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Dr. Navarro, President Matoye, Mrs. Floor, members of the board. I'd like to ask at this uh, time for Angela Allen Hess to please come up. There she is. Angela is the newest member to the student services team. She's selected as our new coordinator for child welfare and attendance. She brings more than 27 years of experience in education to our team, began her career as a secondary educator, and served as the facilitator teacher of the California School Age Family Education Program, also known as CalSAFE, in the Paramount Unified School District. Under her leadership, the program was designed as a model program for the state, and most recently she served as the interim coordinator for student wellness, physical education, and student athletics in the Santa Ana Unified School District. We believe her experience with at-risk youth and her ability to connect students and families with community <laughs> services makes her an, an, an excellent addition to our team. Mm -hmm. She'll be picking up foster youth, homeless services, SARB, SART, child welfare, uh, welfare checks, working with our child welfare attendance investigator, and a whole host of other exciting duties. Where I couldn't be more excited to have her on board. She comes with a wealth of experience, Angela Allen Hess. Good evening, Dr. Navarro, President Matoyer, cabinet members, and board members. Thank you all for giving me this wonderful opportunity to address you tonight. I would also like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation and gratitude for selecting me as the coordinator of child welfare and attendance. It is such an honor to have been selected for this position, and I look forward to working with Newport Mesa Unified School District to support the needs of our students, family, and our district community. I believe my background in education and my experience in student support services will be an asset to your school district and its programs. I have spent the majority of my career working with at-risk students in the California School Age Family Education Program, specifically addressing the unique needs of teen parents, foster, foster youth, and McKinney-Vento students. Under my guidance and leadership, as Dr. D'Austin mentioned, that my program was recognized as a model program for the state of California. 
My work has given me the opportunity to address other significant issues, such as graduation rates, absenteeism, and truancy rates. I hope to utilize my skills and experience to represent Newport Mesa Unified and ensure that we are meeting and exceeding all of our goals. Once again, I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude, and I'm excited to join the Newport Mesa family. Thank you. Thank you. Angela, Angela, did you bring any family or team support? Please introduce them to us. Whoop. This is my. <laughs> I know. Nobody told you that would happen. <laughs> this is my husband, Dr. John Hess, and my daughter, Skylar Hess. Hey, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, okay, and as you're all been dying to have happened, community input, and I know we have some cards. Okay, only, uh, okay, these are on the non-agenda items. Alrighty, let's start with Suzanne Gauntlet. Mm -hmm. oh. Good evening, Newport Mesa. My name is Suzanne Gauntlet. My daughter graduated from CDM this past June. During my 13 years of parental activities and advocacy in our school district, I had the opportunity to serve on numerous committees and panels, including the calendar committee. Back in May 2012, I was placed on the calendar committee because I was an incoming Harbor Council PTA president. At the time, my daughter was only in fifth grade. I like so many other Elementary school parents, I had no idea of what was in store for me and my daughter as she matriculated through middle school and high school and the importance of the collegiate calendar which supports our students. And the issue has always been, since then, air conditioning in our schools and our classrooms. As of now, Newport Mesa is the only unified school district in Orange County that has not adopted a calendar that starts before Labor Day. So in the fall of 2017, the calendar committee convened. We consisted of 12 members from both unions, administrators, a former parent, and myself. Consensus from the calendar committee on the collegiate calendar was reached after five committee meetings, five community town halls, and a survey. The committee recommended that the 2021 school year should commence before Labor Day 2020. The transition at this time would be perfect since it would, you would only lose one week of summer because Labor Day that year falls the second week of September. At that time, the teachers union president and committee member, Britt Dowdy, gave a thumbs up with that placement of an AC in the remaining schools. There was no longer any impediment to starting school before Labor Day. AC in our schools has been a priority in our district, and this summer will conclude six years of installation of AC programs in our classroom at an estimated cost of $75 million. I have been an enthusiastic supporter of our teacher and their union for many years. That is why I'm in total, at a total loss to understand knowing what the district's AC plan is and why all the information out there on our students and their mental health and well-being that the union would choose a negotiation strategy that hurts our students. Britt Jowdy, just because it's time to negotiate the contract does not mean it's right to use the beneficial student calendar change as a bargaining chip. Such actions are deplorable and contrary to the union mission statements, which in part state you are champions of fairness for our students and committed to advancing these principles. Our kids are under incredible pressure from every direction. Well over a third of our students take AP and IB classes where summer work is mandatory. Over 90% of our students go on to community colleges and four-year universities. Those applying to college are applying at the hardest time in our nation's history. Orange County, <clears throat> has some of the highest rates of student self-harm and suicide in the country. <clears throat> a month rarely goes by when we don't hear about a student's suicide. In these past few months, we have witnessed our kids engaging in more and more dangerous activity involving drugs and alcohol with tragic outcomes that are devastating our communities. Teachers, you must rethink your position on the school calendar. We are all here for our kids. We must ensure that our current generation and all future generation of Newport Mesa students are not overly stressed as they are today. Students are not bargaining chips uh, yep, yep, in yep. contract negotiations. Do the right thing Mrs. and agree to adopt the calendar committee. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Kate Allen, followed by Emily Valentine. <clears throat> Good evening, school board. Um, I'm Kate Allen, and I'm a junior at Corona Del Mar High School, uh, and I'm also on the leadership team for the Youth in Government program held at CDM. So when planning our vision for the school year, 
uh, one of the goals that we set was mainly to become more familiar with the local government, so um, specifically our school board and city council. I know that there's a lot more teenagers in the room than usual, and tonight uh, about 30 of us are in attendance here, and another 80 students are at the Newport Beach City Council meeting. So for us, it's really nice that the meeting that we chose to come observe um, when planning our uh, year this summer was, um, would hold a great opportunity for us to share some thoughts concerning a topic that affects us as students immensely, which is um, the possibility of moving to a collegiate uh, schedule. We are very aware that this is a complex issue, and we also understand that what is being discussed is no longer the benefits of a collegiate calendar, but the contractual technicalities by which it would be implemented. Um, there's a, um, in other words, there's a lot that the adults have to figure out, but um, we are simply here to share the perspective of the student. Um, there are some great resources on the NMUSD website outlining the benefits of this schedule. Um, and our goal is to expand and give some context on those already presented points, as well as some other ideas that we've come up with. Um, so I personally support the implementation of the collegiate schedule uh, within the proposed time frame for a variety of reasons, and I think that my thoughts also reflect those of my peers. Um, from finals to midterms to state testing, fall sports, um, college internships and orientations, the timelines all really make sense to me. Um, and all of these factor, factors are those that do, uh, affect students directly. So um, as well as from the standpoint uh, of culture and opportunity and um, honestly students' mental health, um, as the previous speaker stated. Um, therefore, we all thought it was super important that we shared our perspective. Um, so Max and Emily will expand on these points, but we're really grateful to be here and to be included in the discussion. Um, and hopefully seeing a little bit of the student perspective is valuable to you and to all the decisions that you all get to make. So thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Emily, followed by Max. Emily Valentine, there you are. <laughs> Hello, I am Emily Valentine, a sophomore at Corona Del Mar. As a member of both CDM's youth and government program, as well as the student body government, I believe that altering the calendar will have a positive impact on our school's culture. At a basic level, trying to match other districts and colleges reduces many current complications. Families trying to co coordinate valuable time to spend together over vacation find this unnecessarily difficult due to the lack of continuity between their children's schedules. I personally was unable to visit my Northern Californian cousins and had issues spending time with my private school friends this past summer due to our breaks not aligning. Complying with the collegiate calendar will help alleviate this issue. While I am only a sophomore, the time is quickly approaching for me to move to college. While we spend a lot of time addressing the benefits of a later start, we can often forget that it means we also end later. I had friends that had no choice but to miss class at the end of the last school year to take part in orientations or events in June, since colleges rightly assumed most students were already finished with their classes. Many internships and job opportunities that students desire to take part of begin in June. They are missing out at a shot at something that could better their future and themselves. A change in schedule also allows most seniors more time to spend their final moments at home. Part of my job with ASB is planning rallies, dances, and school culture activities that coincide with the dates in September and October. Things like homecoming and our crucial rival football game, important parts of any high school calendar, happen early on in the year. Immense preparation goes into this time of the year to plan and execute the dance, rally, and game. Having more school time to become better equipped for everything would enhance the quality of each event. We could benefit from more time to promote said events as well, possibly increasing student attendance and in turn enriching school spirit. In addition to our work supporting these teams and the school, the change evidently has a positive aspect on the athletes as well. As, as of our current schedule, fall sports have no adequate way to prepare for their earlier games without practice time impeding on their summer. Our sports teams play in matches that occur before school is even in session, which makes it difficult to rally our students to attend. 
while breaks can be utilized as a time to improve our athletic ability, that should not serve as their primary purpose. Beginning school in August would allow more time to be attributed towards getting my peers settled and confident before the chaos of the school year kicks in. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Max. And then Ruth Kobayashi. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. My name is Max Sonnenschein, and I'm a junior at CDM in my third year uh, in youth and government. I want to add on to some of Emily's points by adding three additional reasons for moving the, to the collegiate calendar. First, standardized testing. Two, midterms. And three, opportunities for work and internships. First, moving the start date earlier would benefit AP classes and standardized tests. Uh, over the course of high school, I've taken seven AP classes, and I just took my ACT. I also plan on taking more standardized tests, such as SBAC, um, this year. The AP exams are always in the same time of the year in May, and with our current late start schedule, students are put at a disadvantage, causing teachers to rush through curriculum. In addition, the current schedule also leaves an awkward time after the AP exam, but before the year ends, uh, where all relevant content has been covered, but we still have class. Instead, the earlier schedule would give students more time to learn material, study, and prepare for the exam. Moreover, standardized tests such as SBAC, uh, which would be conducted from February to April, suffers from similar problems and could be reconciled by changing the start date earlier. In other words, start changing the start date will not only help students prepare for exams, but will also yield better test scores for students in our district. Second, starting the school year er earlier will allow for a better time to midterm before winter break. Currently, we have to push our first semester midterms to after the two-week winter break. Uh, if we start school earlier, then we could move this to before this break. This would create a clear break and, and end to the first semester, uh, which would help students come into the second semester fresh and ready to learn. This would also allow students to keep the content in front of them and engaged instead of grinding to a halt only to have to restart. While I agree that this is not the most important point, it is a factor to con consider. Third and lastly, starting school uh, earlier uh, will also make school end earlier, which will help students uh, participate in jobs and internships. Uh, in the past two summers, I've had internships under the mayor of Irvine as an incoming sophomore and under the district attorney's office as an incoming junior. While I learned a lot and r really thought that these were amazing experiences, the current schedule limited the time that I could uh, spend in these programs. Um, seeing as a ton of um, the programs and summer jobs start in June. The current schedule limits the time students can experience um, and spend in such programs. And this issue does not only pertain to me. Uh, plenty of the jobs and programs that are offered uh, for uh, you know, students and graduates do start in align with the collegiate, uh, collegiate calendar. In short, moving the schedule back would Help move these would help these students get involved in activities earlier in the summer and would expand in the time that they could spend in such programs. Thank you. Thank you. Ruth, followed by Dennis Ashendorf. Good evening. My name is Ruth Sanchez Kobayashi. Our two girls are graduates of CDM and are currently in college. I'm a former PTA board member and currently facilitate the Challenge Success Parent Book Club at Corona Del Mar High School, where we seek to partner with our school for a well-balanced environment for our students. Our school district has demonstrated its commitment to student well-being by putting its money where its mouth is. Investments have been made through the Stanford-based Challenge Success Program, increased hiring of mental health professionals, support of one on campus, and professional development that focuses on caring relationships between students and teachers. Why have you done this? Because anxiety and depression are at an all-time high in schools across our country. Because just this year, students in high-performing schools and in affluent communities have been identified as high-risk students. Because anyone who reads the newspaper knows the sadness and loss in our communities. Our district has also prioritized student well-being by supporting a collegiate calendar for our schools. Being able to have final exams completed before the holidays is consistent with the current best practices in student well-being, consistent with the principles in the Challenge Success Program. 
Academically, students and teachers have more time to prepare for state mandated exams and AP exams. Yes, summer will end a little bit earlier, but AP work will not need to be done over the summer. Kids will be able to compete for summer jobs with the rest of the county, and graduating seniors will be able to get to college for orientation with the rest of the country. Only in Huntington Beach, Fountain Valley, and Newport Mesa do schools hold on to an outdated school calendar. We all acknowledge that the change will take some getting used to, but I urge all of our stakeholders to join nearly all of Orange County and support a new school calendar that can contribute to the health of our students and is consistent with the principles that this district has invested in for the sake of our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Aschendorf, followed by Leslie Murtaugh. Good evening, Dr. Navarro, President Matoye, and distinguished board members. Time, time is all we have. Two years ago, Mr. Lee Sung and Mr. Drake listened to an early proposal on how to use four plus four double blocks to improve math instruction. Yes, they rejected it, but they kept an open mind. Thank you. What I didn't voice was that I was trying to save our four plus four blocks from two critical failures. They cost students 20% of their core class time and reduce the number of minutes people spend in school, both of which diminish morale. Ask your office managers. Four plus four fails behavioral management 101. Four plus four may have been worth the trade off for more remediation, but we collapse on the credit recovery drug. Leaving at 1.30 only benefits athletes. We are not obligated to follow PLC plans that predate Dr. Navarro. Why do I mention this now? We are at an impasse over starting school in August, which is no big deal to me. You employ me, thank you very much. Justify starting in August by saying we need to align our athletic schedules with the CIF and other small things, fine. However, if you claim it's for academics, ouch, weak tea. <sighs> the reason is replacing four plus four would yield three more times the amount of core classroom minutes without disrupting families and voters. The real goal is variable length classes. Dr. Dowdy has asked time and time again, are you sure you're against August? We can settle quickly. Members reply, no August. He's representing his members. You want better academic results? Try jujitsu. Drop August and replace it with the right to change bell schedules at the start of each semester for three years with one month notice until the best one is found. Dollars would sweeten the deal because only the teachers are being asked to waive rights. I would imagine that a combination of elementary and AP teachers would approve that contract. Forget blame. We are living within an ugly zeitgeist. Consider your managers. Their most valued ability is responding flexibly with finesse. Juggling parents, students, and teachers ain't easy. Yet we're squabbling over the wording on benefits funding. Two years ago, my union was correct in asking for more money. Yes, they were. But the response wasn't, yikes, you're right. But anything we pay now, will not be available later. Do you really need the money up front? Instead, more ugliness. Time, we keep wasting precious time. Small issues drive Mr. the biggest wedges. Remember big Indians versus Indian, little Indians? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Murtaugh followed by Esmeralda Gamboa. Good evening. My name is Leslie Murtaugh. I've lived in Costa Mesa since I was two. I attended Adams, Tewinkle, and Estancia High Schools. My daughter did the same. I have worked full time at Sonora, Whittier, and College Park schools, mostly teaching kindergarten. I retired in June after 35 years of service. I care deeply about my community. 
My father was an officer in World War II and later a successful businessman. He taught me that the enlisted men always eat first. Dad said, you want to make sure your men are fed. Administration has a contract. Classified employees have a contract. Teachers who are in the trenches with our children have no contract. <coughs> the last time I spoke up about something important, I was told by the top two administrators, it has already been decided and then you need to be quiet. I liked and needed my job and I did fear retaliation. I kept quiet, retired, and am now free to speak. Class size is going up. I had 24 to 29 students per class my last several years of teaching. Special education students are routinely, routinely placed in the regular classroom. Getting children identified and serviced can take years and much extra time and effort. The need for classroom support has increased. Student stress levels are at historic highs and the school day is longer. Teacher morale is low. They are paying the increase in health insurance premiums from last year to this year out of pocket. This is an added burden, especially for teachers starting out or those with young families and large mortgages. Administration and classified overcap expenses are being paid. They have their deal. Teachers are being asked to forget about a negotiated account that was never funded and is supposed to cover these overages. Wow. Teachers are flexible and are willing to settle matters in a fair way, but there is this prevailing sentiment that the administration takes joy in digging their heels into the ground and not wavering in their steadfast position. Isn't this supposed to be about what's best for kids? Happy teachers are best for kids, and they're still hungry and losing confidence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Esmeralda Gamboa. Good evening. My name is Esmeralda. I'm a parent at uh, a parent and PTA president at Pomona Elementary. I'm concerned with the lack of communication between parents and the district. Last year, we had the opportunity to get murals painted at our school. Uh, we were working with Mike Howard, a muralist who has worked with multiple schools at this district for uh, over the past 25 years. He found three sponsors. They were going to provide us with about $6,000 worth of murals. Uh, they were going to provide the materials, the volunteers. All we had to do was come up with the design and get approval from the district. I worked with the principal and the administrative assistant floor. I provided all the information that I was asked for. And every time I called for updates uh, to the district, they, um, they would either tell me that, you know, someone would get back to me, they never did, or they would tell me to ask the principal, but she would just tell me to call the district. And so they just sent me around in circles. Um, when I would, um, so very long story short, we never got approved. We lost the sponsorship and the muralist. Mm -hmm. I also called to complain when our lunch tables were taken and given to the charter school. I was not only dismissed, but someone at the district called the principal to complain about me complaining. So um, I think parents need to be able to communicate with the district. Um, they should not be dismissed or disrespected the way that I was. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sher, would you uh, speak with Ms. Gamble outside and uh, get some more information from her, please? Yes. Thank you. Okay, this is part of... No, you still have to do it. Do this... Do, agenda do it. Non -agenda items. I thought I was doing them like I did before. No, okay. That got changed. I'm sorry. Steve Ray? This is Rainy. Sorry about that. We're doing all community input now. Do we? Very but there's no other opportunity for them to speak. I thought See, there was an I option. There was an option there's an option. To, it was my, my understanding, understanding that... Talk over each other because we can't. Okay. It was my understanding that we were going to do community input on non-agenda items at the beginning and all the other community input times as we did before. 
No, they well, my it. understanding oh. was that um, the speakers who, I'm sorry, it's your time, so we're just. Well, we won't push your button until we get we get. There. Um, my understanding was that public comments and non-agenda items were at the beginning, right? And those that wanted to speak on agenda items would have the option of speaking at the beginning or, or waiting for the agenda item, okay. depending on their schedule. Okay, they may need to go home. Mr. Ray, would you like to speak now, or would you like to speak on when we? One minute. In in a minute and a half. <laughs> Okay, well, you can sit close if you He's want to. He's already up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in that case, superintendent's report. Um, you heard some comments uh, regarding negotiations. I just want to make sure the public understands that uh, we're not able to respond because we're still in negotiations. Uh, we also want to make sure that uh, the public knows that we mutually agreed to uh, a mediator to work with us on negotiations. And the, both sides signed the form requesting a mediation. So uh, there's understanding that we were stuck and we needed some help on this, okay? And uh, the other issue is a complaint that was filed to the Public Employees Relations Board uh, that was talked about regarding the uh, health benefits uh, count. And that is also something we're not able to comment because it too is in a legal process. So these are both issues that the uh, uh, Federation uh, uh, wanted to, well, one, we were both wanting to move forward on mediation for negotiations. The Federation chose to move forward on uh, going to have an administrative hearing with uh, the Public Employee Relations Board, which will try to uh, clarify the language. Okay, thank you. Student board member reports. So students, there's more students coming. And we start with Caroline from Corona Del Mar. So you probably know half of the people out there. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Caroline Brewster and I'm representing Corona Del Mar High School. And here's a quick briefing about what's been happening on campus these past two weeks. For an academic update, over 95% of students enrolled in an AP class or signed up for the AP exam. And this semester, 444 students qualified for California Scholarship Federation as well. Wow. In athletics, our football team just won their second round of CIF, and they are on to the semifinals this Friday versus Albany. The girls' tennis team won Division I CIF last week for the first time in two years. As for recent events, ASB's VAPA committee put on the first annual open mic night last Tuesday in the quad, and it was a huge success. There were a host of performances that included slam poetry, piano and vocal solos, and stand-up comedy. Peer Assistance Leadership also put on Friendship Week last week, which included colorful decorations and break activities. In upcoming events, Orcas's dance team has been rehearsing for weeks in preparation for the annual Dancing with the Teachers, which is this Thursday. Students get the opportunity to see their teachers outside of class doing something fun outside of teaching. As for community projects, AYS and EAT leadership groups collaborated and executed a canned food drive during their Giving Thanks Week two weeks ago and donated the collected goods to a local, local homeless shelter. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kenya. That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Feel free. You can applaud. We like to listen to students, okay, too. So, hi, my name is Kenya Roach, and I, I represent Estancia High School. So for the academic update, on uh, November 3rd, three seniors signed to the university that they will be attending to this fall, 2020. And on November 15, we recognize students for their out outstanding grades and behavior as our students of the quarter. For the athletic update, we won our football battle of the bell game versus Mesa with a score of 27-21, getting us that six P. And <laughs> rub it in. Yeah. And, <laughs> and our winter sports are coming up, and we're excited to finally get our new stadium, which opens this week. And our first home game is tomorrow versus Century for soccer. And some events that will be happening in our school is our annual blood drive is tomorrow, November 30th. Uh, we will be having a Spirit Week to celebrate Kindness Week this week, and Lean Crew on Monday put up kind sayings on the students' lockers, and ASB will be putting up a little photo booth for students to take pictures with their friends. And seven students, with the help of two staff members, will be a part of a program called Diversity, Inclusion, and Health and Racial Healing, and this program is to help reduce culture of stereotyping among the youth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Catherine?
Good evening, President Matoye, members of the board, Dr. Navarro, distinguished guests, and fellow student board members. I'm Catherine Pham, the student board rep for Costa Mesa High School. Okay. The 11th grade Delta field trip is this week. Delta students are traveling to Palo Alto and San Francisco, where they will be touring Stanford University and UC Berkeley. Last week, it was signing day for two very talented Mustang athletes. Malia Tafuga will be playing volleyball at Stanford University, and Aiden Blair will be swimming at Cal Poly. Both are Division I schools. The CMHS girls cross country team has qualified for CIF finals. They took second at prelims with senior Diane Molina leading the way with a first place finish. They are one step away from state. Our wrestling program will be sponsoring a 32 team tournament this Saturday with teams from all over Southern California. Our cross country runners, Diane Molina and JP Patazzi were named as the Kiwanis Athletes of the Month. Mesa cheerleader Tristan Tabor has been named a national Wendy's High School Heisman School winner. Tristan is a member of our cheer squad, traditional cheer, and stunt. She was honored for her excellence in academics, athletics, and community service. The Reflections Look Within Art Showcase featured three Costa Mesa artists, Vivian Nguyen for photography, Averly Sojo for visual arts, and me, Catherine Pham, for literature. <laughs> Uh, the CMHS band received first place at the recent University High School Tournament. Spread the Love Week is this week. Every day there will be a different ASB-sponsored activity um, that's held during lunch. What's really fun about this week is not only are we spreading love, ASB always covers the quad with hearts. Each individual heart has one person's name on it and everybody gets a heart, students and staff. Finally, there is a beach cleanup day set for November 23rd. That wraps up. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's okay. <laughs> it's Excuse very me. professional. Oh, amazing. Um, We've even had iPads. Oh, for those of us that are print challenged. It's a, a little advanced for me. Um, <clears throat> Good evening, President Matoy, uh, Board Trustees, Dr. Navarro, members of the Cabinet, and distinguished guests. My name is Luke Graham, and I'm here representing Early College High School. So, just to run through this really quickly. Um, academic update-wise, this Thursday evening at 6.30 p.m. is our first ECHS information night for current middle school students and their parents to learn more about ECHS. Principal Dr. Martinez, who's hopefully here, high school counselor Mrs. Galini, and our students will be present will be present to share about ECHS. The application for students to apply to ECHS for the 2020-2021 site as early as January 1st. Hard copies can be picked up at ECHS on January 13th when we return from our winter break. Um, as always, athletics, we have none. Um, <laughs> to, it's, it's not says. funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he tweeted pictures of soccer. Yeah, there, there's some stuff Thank going you. on. And we have a... House Across. comp this weekend, oh, all sorts of things, yeah. always. Um, so back on November 2nd, ECHS dance students participated in a dance show titled A Tribute to Love, held at the Costa Mesa High School Performing Arts Center, along with students from University High School in Irvine. This year featured 38 ECHS students who are participating and performing in dance, which is a program now in its fourth year of existence at our school. Uh, early this month, on November 7th, Miss Lawrence, who serves as our sophomore and senior English teacher, as well as our avid senior seminar teacher, was honored at a pregame ceremony held at the Staples Center prior to the Clippers mm -hmm. versus Trailblazers NBA basketball game as part of the Los Angeles Clippers Teachers Appreciation Program, recognizing outstanding teachers in Southern California. This is the third consecutive year an ECHS teacher has been recognized, as Miss Treffner was a recipient in 2017 and Miss Warren was a recipient in 2018. Otherwise than that, uh, upcoming events, we're looking at this Friday, our AVID seniors, which is like me, along with Dr. Martinez, who is also the AVID district director, will be heading up to San Diego or down to San Diego for an all day long college field trip. One week from today, on November 26th, we are looking forward to our third annual college application success event, CASC. Uh, this is the day we celebrate our class of 2020, which is also me, as all seniors will have submitted at least one college application on this date. We know several board members, Dr. Mavaro, and other officials from our school district and Orange County Department of Education will be in attendance that day, as we appreciate the support. Other than that. Thank you very much. Uh, they 
President Matoye. Um, Oops, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, oh, okay. Bailey, feel free to stand yeah, up. That's Go okay. Uh, I'll, I have a comment after Bailey. Bailey. Okay. Yeah. Go Bailey. <laughs> Good evening, school board members, Dr. Navarro, executive cabinet, and community members. My name is Ava Goss, and I'm a replacement for Bailey tonight. Sorry. Um, <laughs> That's not Bailey. I'm the student Thank board you. representative from Newport Harbor High School. An academic update that happened last week was the joining of IB Biology, IB Astronomy, and AP Physics classes to choose groups for a Group 4 project being presented in December. Students were expected to group up with students in a different science class than themselves to choose a current science topic of their choice to research. In athletics, football won a CI, CIF playoff game last Friday. We came back in the fourth quarter from being 10 points behind. The stands were packed, and everyone was having a great time in the student section. Water polo got second place in Division I CIF in the championship game on Saturday night. In current events, Drama is currently hosting the 25th annual Putnam C County Spelling Bee play with shows playing last weekend and this upcoming weekend. ASB is hosting a Kindness Week this week with different kindness activities happening every day at lunch. We have installed a poster wall with kind messages and another wall with every student's name on it to make everyone feel included in this week's activities. Some upcoming events include the, di the district-wide beach cleanup happening on Saturday to finish off Kindness Week. We've contacted our big clubs and have had announcements going throughout the last couple weeks to promote it. And finally, earlier this month, PTA sponsored our Grandparents' Day luncheon, where over a thousand students and their grandparents enjoyed a lunch together provided by our, by our culinary arts program. Newport Harbor is excited for the upcoming holiday festi festivities and performances. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. Sorry about that. Mrs. Sna Mrs. Snell. Snell. Um, I'm just wondering, last um, meeting, uh, I asked um, the student board members if they could go back to their groups and uh, find and talk about incentives for the SBAC oh. in 11th grade. Were you able to do that? Again? I know it's been kind Should of Should we busy. ask them again? <laughs> um, well, I th Luke? <laughs> Uh -huh. um, what, you probably yeah, should come up so good. they can, yeah, yeah. Um, well, here I am again. Uh, <laughs> how's everybody doing? Um, we talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, we have a lot of things going on at school, as yeah. you heard. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I'm going to still stick by... Uh, we all sort of agreed upon it. We didn't get to expand upon it, though, mm -hmm. the idea of competition within the district. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's healthy. We love crushing each other at school. Um, <laughs> and in the kindest way possible, yeah. Uh -huh. And, I mean, as so long as we're avoiding... Um, oh, I've completely blanked on what we're avoiding. But it was terrible. Putting it on the transcript? <laughs> yes, that's the thing that we're <laughs> avoiding. I thought that might be it. Um, yes, no, don't do that, please. Um, yeah, uh, competition's a little bit like, are we talking about competition with who gets the highest <laughs> scores or competition? Yeah. With, yeah, or I don't really know about that. Percentages, percentages, percentages of people that... Take it? Well, no, because everybody should be taking it. We need to, we need to, we need to evolve that idea a exactly. little further. And um, yeah, and I would be interested in the other students, like if you could, um, I know there's a lot going on, and then when's our next meeting? December 10th. 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 Yeah, so <laughs> maybe by the beginning of the year, January, uh, our first meeting in January, if you could um, come back with um, some ideas from your, um, your governance groups uh, on how we could, and maybe incentives isn't the answer, but how we could encourage students in 11th grade, I'm speaking of 11th grade, to um, give a higher priority focus on the SBAC. Most definitely. Okay, thank you, Luke. Of course. Okay. We gotta feed them. Feed them? Feed them. Oh, yeah. If we feed the them, incentive? they will come. <laughs> That's a good um, incentive. Board, I would, 
I would like to ask your mm -hmm. indulgence. At the very beginning when we adopted our agenda, I was remiss in requesting that we adjourn this meeting in the name of Linda Sneen, mm -hmm. who was a school board member, a hugely supportive PTA mom, mm -hmm. who lost her battle with cancer mm -hmm. over the weekend, or last a week, week, last week. And mm -hmm. so I forgot to do that, so if that's okay and we're nodding is fine, I just wanted to make sure that we had that on the record. Thank you, all right. Uh, Madam President, before you leave uh, that topic that Mrs. Snell brought up okay, with the student, <laughs> I was going to recommend that if our student leaders can speak with their ad, uh, activities directors, and then that information can then get funneled to uh, our student, our superintendent student advisory, who can then take the take the ball and run with it. So, uh, if you don't mind speaking to your uh, activities director and asking them how you can you can get some good ideas on what would inspire everybody to really do their best on SBAC as 11th graders, then that information can go to the students who are part of the student advisory and we could have a robust <laughs> debate about it and maybe uh, take, it, take it from there. Um, so not report back? Well, no. They can report back, okay. but I'm just saying that, that I'd well. like them to include the activities director as well. And because they don't, well the, and student, the student advisory committee doesn't report to us, so we've got to talk. And we have a very unique situation with a captive audience of, quote, young people who must take this S back in their 11th grade. Do any of you have any feedback, feedback to give us right now? If you don't have to write a paper, you just can come up to the microphone and say, <laughs> much like Luke, oh gosh, don't put it on our transcripts, or yes, let's have healthy competition. Or, to bring you up to speed, we have found that there's a concern in the 11th grade. With the data that we see, there's a big dip of the amount of people. It shows, it shows our growth going like this all the way up to the 11th grade, and it kind of drops off. We as adults and school board members understand that in the 11th grade, you have, oh, let's see, AP testing, ACT testing, SAT testing, and your brains are frazzled to the very end, but that SBAC testing is really important for us as a school district. So we were looking at how do we help make it important to you to try your best on the test and not just show up and take it and say, I don't, it doesn't matter, this isn't gonna help me, I don't care. So that's where we were going. So if you have any great ideas, crickets, okay. <laughs> if you think, yes, yes, did you, I saw one in the back, come, come up. Come on up, just come up to the microphone. You can come up in groups if you want. And the reason we have you come up to the mic is because our meetings are recorded and that way for all posterity, we can hear you. Okay. okay just, you can just pull it to there you go, perfect. Oh, wait. Give us your name. Though, Hi, I'm Michelle Cleely. Hi. Um, I'm part of youth in government, so we're here today just to observe and stuff like that. I agree that testing becomes really redundant from ACT, AP, and mm -hmm. just we lose focus of like the meaning of all these things. Like we know AP is for college credit, mm -hmm. ACT is to get into college, mm -hmm. that I feel like a lot of students don't know the purpose of SBAC testing. Mm -hmm. I recall mm -hmm. sitting in my 11th grade classroom and everyone's like, oh, what's this even for? Like if I put random answers, w what's gonna happen? Like <laughs> they, they're so, they're, they get mm -hmm. very like flustered with like, like all the testing, they don't really know the purpose. So personally, I believe that I can't put my all into everything if I don't know where my score is going, what this score is for. So I believe if we were more informed of what this score was for, people would try. And I, I remember I was told that this score could possibly be used for some kind of credit if you go to like a community college, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but that was an incentive for me mm -hmm. to think maybe I will end up at a two-year college, maybe this could help me. Mm -hmm. So I personally put my all into that test and I knew that even if like it didn't matter that there's a possibility that it could help. Mm -hmm. So I think just informing the students would be really helpful and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a great idea. Thank, thank you. So thank you. Thank you for, for being brave to come idea. up and talk. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you so much. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, same crickets. Well, if, you, if you Whoops. think of something, um, you can contact your student board member or you can send a, an email to all of us. Yep, and oh yes, please. You can put NMUSD Board of Education and it comes to everybody. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can send it to any one of us you like. Dr. The Navarro. Activity Director, too. We'll let them. Yes, Activity Director. Yeah.
talk to people. Whatever. Uh, yeah. let, it, let it get back to us. Dr. Navarro. Well, I'm impressed that she knew about the qualification score. Mm -hmm. And really what it's for, it's for the Cal States. So it gets you into oh. a four-year college if you have nice. a certain score on these exams. Really? They will that. actually uh, reach out to you and accept you early. So it's an early identification tool for our 11th graders. Whoa. Yes, back yes, yes. Whoa. We need to get that out there. See, isn't it good you asked? Because now we all know too. Yeah. Wow. It's not just grading on how we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Apparently it does more than just <clears throat> how our district is doing. Yeah. Um, that being said, Nikki, who isn't Julie, welcome back. Thank you. By the way, I was just at Harborview and I noticed that our tiles are right next to each other on the wall. Oh, yeah. okay. That's a very mel melancholy moment. <laughs> uh, good evening. I'm Vicki Waldo in Julie Link's absence, representing Harbor Council PTA. Um, good evening, President Matoye, board members, Dr. Navarro, and um, cabinet. I'm very pleased to um, talk to you tonight about last Thursday night, we had the reception for our reflections on entries. We've seen an increase in entries as well as schools participating this year. Uh, we were very excited that last year we had uh, 86 art entries and this year we've gone up to 90. And we had 14 schools participating last year, and this year we have 18 schools participating. And a couple of them actually had first place winners. Um, two schools that are brand new that have never participated before, Pallarino and Victoria, and Victoria did have a first place winner. Just to give you an idea of the schools that did produce a first place, place winner that will go on to fourth district's Orange County competition, Adams, CDM, Costa Mesa High, Davis, Early College High, East Bluff, Ensign, Lincoln, Newport Coast, Newport Elementary, Newport Harbor, and Victoria all had first place winners in various categories. Excellent. Now they will go on to the Orange County selection process and probably will be announced, I'm gonna guess, early February. And they will have a reception for Orange County and then they go on to state after that. And we're of course very excited to tell you if we'll have someone going on to state this year. <laughs> also I wanted to give you just a membership update for Harbor Council. Last year, Da, da, da. Okay, this is little print. <laughs> Last year, we ended the year with 7,126 PTA members throughout our district. So far this year, middle of November, we have 6,251. So we are within 900 members of meeting our goal for last year. And I just thought I'd throw this out to you right now. Um, we have uh, one school that has more PTA members right now than any other school, and it's Davis. That's great. They surpassed CDM and um, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, Newport Harbor High this year, so far. Yeah. That's just so far. <laughs> Remember that competition we were talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Um, also, I wanted to remind you that December 2nd is our holiday luncheon. We hope to see everyone there. Um, just to give you an update on, you probably know that, that one of our key members, Cynthia Strassman, has taken over as president to the Back Bay Monta Vista PTA in helping them out. Um, and she's done some wonderful programs there addressing attendance and tardies. One of the programs that she came forward with um, with, uh, it's a no tardy party. And for students that fall within a certain parameter of a limited number of tardies, they get a special luncheon every couple of months. And I think their first luncheon is this Friday and she's really excited because it did help tardy attendance. Sac Safari, that's coming up in February. February 24th through 25th. For everyone, Sacramento Safari is PTA's um, envoy to Sacramento to learn as much as we possibly can learn about what's going on in Sacramento, the bills that are happening, the education process, education funding, etc. In two full days 
of activities, speakers, wonderful speakers, and you go to the Capitol and you meet with some of the representatives. Uh, you go up Monday morning, February 24th, very early. You come back Tuesday night, the 25th, exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> they even have speakers during dinner. So this is like no fun time. It is all education time. It's wonderful, and everyone that goes has always been extremely uh, grateful that they had the opportunity to go. And we were hoping that we might have some board members that would like to participate because you're all welcome to go. You can go on to fourthdistrictpta.org and register online. Uh, then one last thing, we do have our advocacy forum for fourth district coming up this uh, Friday morning. But I wanted to tell you who's going to be there if I can find my paper. Where'd it go? Ah, there we go. Advocacy Forum, um, this Friday morning from 9.30 to 11.30 at Fountain Valley School District Boardroom. They are going to have what's happening in Sacramento from the local legislators. They have Tyler Deep, uh, the state assemblyman for 72nd Assembly District, Ling Ling Chang from the 29th Senate District, and Barb, Bob Archuleta from the 32nd Senate District. I've heard him speak before and he's phenomenal. So you're all welcome, 9.30 to 11.30, Friday morning, the Advocacy Forum. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, um, we have a report from Mrs. Franco on kindness. Okay, so, uh, um, yes. You told that gentleman it would be a minute and a half. No, you said a minute and a half. I said, I did you want to wait till it was time? Oh, okay. Are okay. you okay? You're okay? Okay. I never said Are you comfortable? That. Thank you. Good evening, President Matoy, members of the board, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, and guests. I'm here to present to you a brief video on kindness throughout our district, which was originally featured at our State of the Schools breakfast last month, so it should just be less than five minutes of your time here. I think that kindness is an extremely important value that we've embedded in our schools. It's really important for us to teach students how to be kind and caring and empathetic because that's really what 21st century learning is all about. Being kind is important to me because it's the first thing you give to the parents. It's what you want to receive as well from parents, from kids. You just want to give a positive environment for them. Every day just do something small because it starts from something small and then it expands to something bigger. As adults and really as educators, we have a unique opportunity to make such a powerful difference in the lives of our students and really in the future lives of generations to come through our ability to influence students to perform acts of kindness intentionally. One of the things on campus that we have to be kind is the buddy system. You get paired up with kindergartners and you get to choose. It puts a positive impact on the younger children and then they'll be kind to others. My focus as a teacher is really just to build their confidence in themselves. They can accept kindness um, and receive that, but then also give that um, back to make their school, their family, their community a better place. We have a peers group. The main thing is friendship doing different role playing. So it really helps them practice those skills that they need to be able to be out, you know, within the school campus and being kind. One of the kindness campaigns we have is snap jars where you write a note to someone and like say something nice, like something good. My students love the snap jar. They think it's so much fun. They they beg me to do it every single time we have class. You are always focused and paying attention. Keep it up. When I write a kindness note to someone else, it makes me feel good about myself, and when they get it, it makes their day so much better, and it makes them feel good about themselves. So district-wide, we're what's called a PBIS district, or a Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports District. So across our district, we have programs like POW, or Peer Assistance Leaders. We have um, days dedicated to being kind. Something that we do that I 
love is uh, Mix It Up. It just brings over 150 plus students to sit across these tables and really get to know each other because if we didn't have this event, these students would just see each other as strangers in the hall. Kids are always watching adults, whether we know it or whether we see it or not. They are constantly watching our every move to see what we're doing and how we're reacting to certain situations. So it's important to show kindness, to show responsibility. Making the ID badges is a really good opportunity to spread kindness because most people come in very fearful of getting their picture taken. Um, they don't like to be put on the spot, but I try to make them feel as comfortable as possible, making it a cheerful experience. Being kind gives a positive reflection on the individual and the warehouse as a whole. If we are kind and have a positive outlook, it makes all of our duties and transactions just go a little bit more smoothly. Well, being involved in the community for an adults is super important because that helps not only your kids, not yourself, but the community, the entire community itself by getting involved. And uh, uh, you help others at the same time that you are helping yourself, you're helping your family, and you're learning on the way. By being models of kindness for ourselves, um, our children emulate that. Um, other community members see how kind we are and want to emulate that. Um, and it brings us together as a community, not just as part of the school, but as the larger community. Everyone in the Newport Mesa Unified School District believes that we create a greater sense of purpose and efficacy when we're kind to one another and when we build relationships. So get involved. Have a positive attitude. High five someone. Start a conversation. Lead by example. Have the positive attitude to just see the good in the people around you. Be aware of others. Really listen to others. Reach out to someone in need. Provide great customer service. Be encouraging to the people around you. Say un buen ejemplo para tu hijo. Take care of our planet. Let's let one another know what we appreciate about them. When we perform acts of kindness and when we do things that are good for one another, we become stronger as a community. So I think the presentation was perfectly timed on purpose, of yeah. course, yeah. with uh, an MUSD Kindness Week, which you heard from student board members earlier today. Mm -hmm. So we hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope that you continue to spread kindness throughout the school year. And if you recall, a little um, video we did earlier this year on Early College High School, mm -hmm. we actually were just informed last week that we won a Public Relations Society of America Award for that video. Ooh. And it's going to be submitted for the state chapter for Public Relations Society of America. Wow. Wow. Oops. Mrs. Black. Yeah, I just say, speaking of opportunity, it couldn't be better. So the students' leadership at all of the comprehensive high schools have been working on uh, Kindness Week. And I know that you're all fully uh, engaged as you leave, um, but if we on this Saturday, every uh, this week culminates to on the 23rd at the Balboa Pier mm -hmm. is a beach cleanup, and it starts. Um, at, well, I think nine o'clock officially. You know, they ask the students that are organizing it to be there. You know, a little after eight o'clock, and um, and it should be great, and it should be over. You know, late morning, and so you're not giving up your whole Saturday, but it's a good cause, and I'm really proud of the students. They did amazing job and their leadership is amazing you know just they're really on top of it so thanks for that you're welcome mrs snell i just wanted um to find out from mrs franco um who put the video together sorry i didn't mean to make you, you left so quickly. <laughs> this is helping her out with her steps yeah <laughs> <laughs> want to do a little I know you probably directed it. So the videos are all put together by Adriana Angulo in the communications office and myself, but mostly her. And then the actual videotaping technical side of it is a Westbound Communications. It's a public relations firm that we contract with for video and other public relations services. Okay, well done. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very well done. much. Wonderful. Um, Tia makes a smile. Um, Dr. Navarro, important formal reports. Sure. Well, I'd like to start off by reminding everybody that, you know, we have some principles that we follow when it comes to transforming our system to make sure all of our students are being challenged, okay, and that they're 
really uh, uh, push to reach their potential. Uh, of course, we want to focus on instruction. Uh, of course, we want to focus to make sure that we work on, with all students. But we also want to make sure that as we're doing this, that we're working as a team. And so I've asked our team today, you know, we're be, we, may, we may be small today, but we're mighty, <laughs> is to talk about how we're focusing on systems. Uh, I think the video right there was a really good example of a systems process. You heard site leaders, uh, teachers, uh, the district staff, all focused on a one way to, to, to build a, uh, an accepting, un understanding climate for our students at their schools. I think uh, yesterday's uh, study session on English learners, the status of English learner program and on Title I, really showed how schools, TOSAs, teachers, directors, uh, coordinators are working together with a common vision for, to make a difference and raise the achievement bar for our ELL students and our Title I students. So hopefully uh, you'll pick up on that theme as we go around here. I know uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Bauermeister and Mr. Drake uh, are gonna talk a little bit about some systems thinking, uh, but we really wanna bring a little bit of that sense to our meetings because none of us does this work alone. And uh, it's a team effort and we're really working to reach every kid in the district. Thank you, Dr. Navarro. Um, well, as, as um, many of you on the board know, we've been working uh, particularly in our facilities maintenance and operations department uh, on improving our systems of communication and planning for projects. And uh, I was really pleased uh, the student board member from Estancia High School kind of stole uh, my exciting news uh, for today, which is that the Field was completed on time before the winter sports began, as as we had <laughs> planned. And, and before we, it rains. And and in spite of the fact that uh, even when we are doing good systems planning, sometimes uh, circumstances are what they are, and we ran into some difficulties on that project. But uh, by employing a systems approach, our team uh, has really stayed on top of the project, has found the ways to mitigate the the impacts that came communicate those to the staff so that everyone has been aware of the updates on that project and, and that we were getting it in place and in time. And so it's been really nice to get the thank yous uh, from the, the folks on the site to uh, Mr. Bidnick for those, as well at, at that wonderful school, just to focus on that school for this evening. Uh, other great um, projects that are moving along uh, the pool project uh, is moving along very well. Uh, we're very excited about how that project has uh, gotten focused and is being delivered uh, to the expectations that we laid forward uh, a year plus ago. Uh, and as well, the theater project is continuing in its design process. And uh, I was just at a meeting with the architect this last week and extremely pleased to see how uh, the schematic design that you approved is fleshing out into a more complete project that I think is going to make everybody at that school and in our community very, very proud uh, of the new project. Excellent. Uh, in the fiscal division, we've been spending a lot of time on standards and uh, identifying uh, externally recognized best practices and then applying those to our processes and and um, seeing the connections there that with, uh, with all the other departments that we connect to. And so it's been very helpful. It's a lot of work, but uh, we're making a good progress on that. And um, we expect that things will, um, will, will eliminate a lot of clunkiness. Because um, as you can imagine, being compliance driven, we have a lot of forms and we have a lot of uh, procedures and processes that touch other divisions and, and that kind of thing. And so we, we want to keep the business of the district moving along as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And then um, I understand you all are avid readers, and, and so I'd wanted to uh, make you aware that the uh, legislative analyst has released the uh, 2019 budget review, and there's some uh, good news in that, in that um, the governor has um, made his uh, the first deposit ever to the Education Rainy Day Fund of $377 million, which always is great. Stability is wonderful. And uh, to create some st stability there is, is, uh, is good news. He also uh, put down a lot of money to help stabilize PERS and STRS. 
um, which is helpful for us. So overall, it's uh, great news. It's not as scintillating as reading as your budget, but, <laughs> but pretty good reading, so thank you. So to piggyback on Dr. Navarro's uh, theme of systems, uh, we're talking about community engagement as a system. And so I'm updating on the Human Relations Task Force. We'll have a meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. The meeting will be at the Costa Mesa High School Library. And at that meeting, we'll be rolling out the district implementation of the Human Task Force, Human Relations Task Force recommendation. So there'll be two documents. The first one will be a document that actually shows their recommendations and how we're meeting those recommendations. And then did you guys get this document? Did Annette get this out? You didn't. She'll be getting this tomorrow. At the end, then we'll be rolling it out. This is more of a public uh, facing document uh, that shows kind of what the plan is and, and for students and for staff and community and parents. So we'll be rolling that out tomorrow night, uh, talking about the implementation and monitoring of this plan. And so the big, big job I think for the task force moving forward is in committees we'll be getting together, developing rubrics to evaluate these programs to see if they're meeting the needs of our community and of our kids and of our school, of the programs that we have moving forward. So that will be the work moving forward. We'll be looking at our calendar and uh, again, coming up with rubrics to self-evaluate uh, these programs that we're putting into place. I have a quick question. Is that, is, is that a, um, the committee meeting or is that? Committee meeting, yes. Okay, Task it's Force. a committee meeting. So <laughs> then you, you will come back to the board and present what the, I mean, I know we're gonna get a piece of paper. I just don't know whether. What's the next step? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what's the next step? Well, he told me the next step, the a yeah. rubric. Well, this is the plan. This will tell you everything oh. that we're doing, okay. right, that the district is doing as far as all of our 10th graders are going to the Museum of Tolerance. So there's different things in the plan. The work of the committee then moving forward is to, we'll be creating rubrics and creating evaluation for those plans to make sure they're meeting the needs. And then again, the committee will adjust that moving forward, deciding is that something we wanna move forward with for next year or not. So okay. that'll, that'll kind of be the work. Okay. Karen? Uh, yeah, I just have a question, Dr. Baumeister. Did you notify all the task force members of the change in location? Uh, yes, it was sent out, but we're also gonna send it out again tomorrow okay, as a just reminder. Okay, sure, so you don't want yeah. people to come here. Yes, <laughs> so well, we, sent it out about a, we sent it out about a week or two ago, but we're gonna send it out again tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll have somebody back here in case somebody shows up. Um, mm -hmm. Just in case, but uh, yes, we'll have somebody. Not at Coast that I would ever do that, but sometimes yeah. the car just goes right to where it's always yeah, gone. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. We'll, we'll have somebody here just in case. Can we also make sure that there's an announcement that goes out maybe at Mesa over their loudspeaker or through their activity director or somehow so the students there know that it's at their location? At Coast Mesa High School? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, as Dr. Navarro alluded to, um, we had an opportunity yesterday to listen to um, our Director of Special Projects, Vanessa Gailey, and our uh, Coordinator of EL Services really uh, take us on a deep dive of the supports that are in place for our Title I schools and our EL um, students. Um, and, and really, b besides all the progress uh, that, that, that we've made at, at those sites and, and with our EL students, uh, if you step back and look at what they were really talking about, it, it did have everything to do with systems and structures and process. Um, and what I can also share with you is that does not happen overnight. Um, that takes a long time to, to put in place, and, and Vanessa and Laura um, will be the first to say their work's not done, but um, I will let you know that it's taken several years for them to get to this place, um, and uh, it's an incredible amount of hard work that they've done uh, to get us to this point. In that same vein, you've heard a lot tonight about social emotional learning, mental health, um, and that whole aspect of the, of the child that we need to be caring for uh, as a district. Um, and uh, what I wanna share with you is we are taking uh, our, our next steps in developing those systems uh, as a team. 
um, ed services working very closely with student services under um, Dr. Uh, Diagostino's kind of leadership in developing um, our social emotional behavioral side of our MTSS supports. Um, and again, this is going to take us some time to make sure that we are going back and forth with our principals um, and our teachers and our students to make sure that we're, we're being as efficient and systematic as we possibly can be to get them the support they need both academically as well as socially and emotionally. Um, Dr. Diagostino with George Knights has put together a uh, task force of, um, that includes some district uh, personnel as well as site uh, and counseling support to come together periodically to make sure that we're hearing what we need to hear in order to put these systems in place. So again, kind of back to that idea of systems and structures and really coming together to collaborate um, uh, around social emotional needs of kids. Um, we, we hope in a, in a short period of time we'll be coming back to you um, with where we are in all of that. Um, Ms. Anderson? Okay. I've got it. Okay. Mrs. Floor. Um, thanks, John. I, it was fabulous yesterday, and I really appreciate it. Um, one thing when you're talking about this, I hope that you will consider, um, as you get down, parents and utilizing the PTA and students, because there are not only students that are in crisis, but there are families in crisis. Um, and if we know anything through our SARB process and through what we go through on the school attendance review board is that it is a whole system. It's the family system that in sometimes is, is in crisis. It's causing students to fail at school. Um, and they may be being very successful at school, but their, their family life is in chaos. And so I would hope that, that as we go th through this systems approach that we don't ignore a major component of that, which is parents and community, um, and that there there needs to be some sort of place for them at the table to have a conversation, as well as students. So part of the system. Part they of the system. Need to be part of the system. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Gee, we're going to have a shorter time. Oh, John. No, no, no. Don't, Don't jinx it. I know. Don't, Don't forget Mr. Ray. I have <laughs> definitely not <laughs> forgotten Mr. Ray. Um, but we have to move in second and then let you speak. We are now coming to the exciting part of our meeting, which is the consent calendar for you and youth and government. It's not exciting at all. Um, I need a motion to approve this consent calendar. I'll move to approve the consent calendar. Mrs. Bartow moved to second. Second. Is that Mrs. Mrs. Yelsey? Yelsey? Okay, Mrs. Yelsey. And before we vote, we have one comment. Mr. Ray. Oh, you guys are going to all miss Mr. Ray. <laughs> you should wait till he speaks. It could be it's only three minutes. He can't talk longer. We cut him off. <laughs> well, thank you, Madam President and honorable board members, staff. Uh, I'm Steve Ray, executive director of the Banning Ranch Conservancy. First of all, uh, please excuse my voice tonight. I am just recovering from a severe bout of laryngitis and mm. I may lose my voice a little here, so please bear with me here. Uh, I came to you a couple of months back and offered to uh, work with you and your staff to help restore the land uh, that you own that's adjacent to Banning Ranch. Uh, that offer still stands. We're very serious about that. Uh, but I, I wanted to speak on your 17A item here because I, I see that you're in the process of, of hiring legal counsel uh, regarding, I'm sure it's regarding that matter, maybe others too, but that one for sure. Um, and first of all, let me say that Susan Horry of Manette Phelps is uh, an excellent attorney. Uh, she is an extremely worthy opponent, and she is absolutely the friendliest opposing counsel I've ever sat across the table from. Uh, so I highly recommend her uh, for her for her talent and her skill. Uh, but I, I would like to caution uh, you that uh, before you decide to challenge the Coastal Commission, that you you need to have another perspective on this. Uh, Ms. Horry certainly will provide excellent counsel to you for whatever you decide to do. But I make another offer to you tonight, and that is that uh, I will again offer. Uh, 
the assistance of myself and the Banning Ranch Conservancy to work with you to try to resolve this matter. Uh, knowing just a little bit about the Coastal Act and, um, and how the system works and everything, and having been to the Supreme Court and the Coastal Commission regarding those issues, um, we feel that we may be able to offer some, some of our expertise to you and would be happy to meet with, with uh, you and, and your staff and uh, your council uh, to try to work something out because I think going to the Coastal Commission in a spirit of kindness mm -hmm. and cooperation is probably going to be much more effective than taking an adversarial role with them. Uh, so we are uh, here in, as a, uh, hopefully your neighbor and trying to be neighborly here. Uh, and speaking of being a neighbor, uh, you might have heard that our uh, gala a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago where we celebrated our 20th anniversary of trying to preserve Banning Ranch, that we made three big announcements. One, that's the Trust for Public Land, which is a very large land uh, negotiation agency, has partnered with us to negotiate this, the purchase of Banning Ranch with the owners. Uh, we have a design team that are working with us to realize our vision, and we have a donor that gave us $50 million to achieve that. So we're hoping to be your neighborly neighbor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, youth and government, for waiting. I appreciate Yay. it. Good job. i just like to let you know that the young man who's leading the students out used to be a teacher. Brandon is uh, now in private industry, but he spends his time, personal time, to come down and work with the youth and government group down at CDM, and thank you for thank doing you. that. Yeah. Thank you. Mrs. Bartow, um, we haven't I, voted yet. I just had one. It's a more of a question, and it's a it's for Tim, and it's for for future. Um, for the HVAC 17A6, um, I reviewed that. It looks great. My only question was, I went through the facilities report, and I didn't. I don't know if you have planned, and it's just not on here. For um, I was when I did my tour of schools, the culinary staff at Newport Harbor mentioned that their cafeterias, and we've talked about it in the past, um, need AC as well. Is that something that's on for on future? the Newport Harbor group? Yes, and I think Costa Mesa as well. So the, uh, let me. Uh, I'm actually having a little bit trouble hearing, but I think what you asked was, is the cafeteria at Newport Harbor on the plan for air conditioning? Yes. Yes. And and the answer is that. Um, the program has been to air condition the classrooms. Uh, so the current plans, the plans that we've been following has been to complete classrooms. It's not on the current list. Oh. At the current time, that's not one of the areas that's being. Uh, I think what you're asking is about the home ec classrooms where they do the culinary classes. No, uh, no I went, when I was here for the teacher meeting in the summer, it came up too. Um, they, they were just wondering if it was, gonna, if it was something that we have planned going forward the the cooking part or the eating part the cafeteria. in the actual cafeteria because they work in the inside. Oh, okay oh well uh, okay. yes the, those are different <laughs> those are very different and those will be different designs uh, but uh, mr. Holcomb's right we are uh, uh, acing all the learning areas first right okay. now okay thank you that's a new cafeteria that was I mean that the, the cooking area should be the new. kitchen is new at they're Newport cooking Harbor. at Newport Harbor. That's that kitchen was yes was reconstructed when the building was reconstructed uh, when the former building was taken down right. with the tower, etc. And that one might have it, but all our other uh, kitchens do not. Okay, uh, so okay. it's probably just me mis not understanding what I was yeah. asking. So thanks for the clarification. Yeah, yeah it was about the cooking. Area. Yes, yes, and and those are not on because of where they're located and the costs associated with having to redo the whole building over. Ms. Anderson? I have a follow-up question to that. Um, because we are doing our summer food programs at Costa Mesa High School, it's not air-conditioned. So there, we have our staff that are in there, and it's extremely hot. I've also heard that from teachers and people that work in the kitchens. 
So I'm just concerned that we're doing such a big project at Mesa particularly, and that's where we were doing summer school and the summer meals for students. Are you? I'm, 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 what, I, what I can tell you is that the, um, the directive that we've been following for the last few years of air conditioning our sites has been to a, a program to air condition our classrooms. And so that's been what we've been doing at mm -hmm. each and every school as we have gone to each school. And it will be completing that, com that mission uh, by uh, air conditioning at the couple of high schools that still have a few classrooms that need to be air conditioned this next summer, which will meet your expectation of air conditioning all classrooms by the start of school next year. And for then the, we for the summer programs, are the meals cooked here or at Costa Mesa? Because they go to a couple places. The meals are there for people who don't well, have access I, to food. Uh, I, I don't have Dale here, but I thought the, oh, that's, it's, a cooking, it's cooked away yeah, and it's heated on the campus, but so it's not about cooking. Mm -hmm. It's just keeping things warm. Because yeah, I was get at put the wellness warmers. committee, which it's not. that, that uh, no, I'll seen. report on later, but they cook meals for various So groups. I will get a Dale to give us an update that I can give to the board later this week on how we operate the summer uh, food program at Costa Mesa. She's not here, so I don't want to, I don't want to make any assumptions. I, the only, I bring it up because a staff person asked me about it and said that it was sweltering. So that it's not my personal experience. It's a staff, it's a person who is in our kitchen at Mesa for. It is accurate that our kitchens are not AC'd. Is there a plan to do that? Not yet. No, not at this point. Any other questions on the consent calendar? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Resolution consent calendar. Uh, move adoption of the resolution consent calendar. Uh, resolution 12, 11, 19, selection of Farmers and Merchants Bank as a uh, depository for various accounts of district and authorizations therewith. And 18B, 13, 11, 19, requesting financial assistance, which I think is really important, this one, from the Orange, the County of Orange and their receipt, uh, the receipt of mental health services funds as approved by the County Board of Supervisors. This one is about money that is entitled to us and to schools mm -hmm. that the County Board of Supervisors in terms of the tax of the one million, the million dollar one million. They're hoarding income, they're hoarding it. They are. They are they're exactly hoarding, hoarding it. it. And there's a ton of money there, and they have not released it Tons. to our schools. It's over seventy. Million? How many millions Hundreds of, of millions dollars? Of dollars? Um, well, at the first, something. at the first uh, glance, uh, or the first allocation that came to Orange County, there were two hundred forty million dollars there. And it's still there. Uh, no, they've spent it other ways. On homeless. Yes. Not on mental But it's health. also, we're, we're collectively doing this with the other districts in Orange exactly. County, not just Newport Mesa. We're just Mesa. asking him to release the funds to. I second it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to vote for both adoptions. All those, it's a roll call vote. Okay. Mrs. Snyder? Ms. Matoye? Yes. Ms. Floor? Yes. Ms. Black? Yes. Ms. Yelsey? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Bartow? Yes. Ms. Snow? Yes. Okay. Discussion action calendar. Um, 18A, Mrs. Gailey. It's a big week for you. <laughs> Did you get to sleep at all? <laughs> I was looking for your daughter. I thought you might have brought her <laughs> later tonight. I, I thought about that. It's, you know, it would be fun to have bring your daughter today to work in the evening. Um, so President Matoye, members of the board, and Dr. Navarro, and uh, cabinet and distinguished guests. Uh, we have an annual item before you this evening, which is approval of our school plans. Um, the format of the plan changed, and that's why we wanted to make sure that we um, address any uh, uh, questions that you have. Um, the, the template changed in early uh, uh, February. That's when um, some of the news was released. And the purpose of the change was really to adjust the alignment, because No Child Left Behind ended, and in its place, the Every Student Succeed Act arrived, and there were some additional requirements. So um, the template changed, and one of the things that we did is took um, some uh, school representatives to a training in early March to learn about the template and to say, is this the right time for all of us to transition? Um, and so when we looked at
at it, we thought we were all up to the task. Um, so it was a, a rather lengthy process with Document Tracking Services, who are, is our vendor, um, to bring that new template into alignment and then to combine it with some of our old elements that we wanted to preserve. Um, and so um, what we're bringing before you meets compliance requirements. Um, and to the very best of my knowledge, all of the action services and expenditures also meet compliance requirements. Um, and uh, lastly, you should know that the one of the purposes of the redesign was to make it align more closely with the LCAP template. So the look and feel is similar to the LCAP and it has very similar elements in the preamble to it. Um, and then towards the end is more of the, um, the components that align with the um, parent engagement policy, um, the school site council membership, et cetera. So um, with that, I'm happy to address any questions you might have. Mrs. Black. You know, I just, um, thank you for meeting with us too. And um, and it is very daunting, <laughs> um, but, it, but it's also great. I mean, it's not something that I can get through and, mm -hmm. you know, even a couple weeks, but um, so there, I, I appreciate all of that. But one of the things that came up in, in my meeting was um, somebody wanted it online. And and I just think that's very unrealistic, you know, to actually burden the public with such a detailed, you know, report. But I did like your suggestion of having um, anyone in the public meet with the principal for their specific school, because more often people mm -hmm. we're looking at every school mm -hmm. district wide. But and I know principals have been really forthcoming and happy to sit down and walk, you know, walk me through it. So mm -hmm. for their individual schools. So I would really like something to get out to the public after this is mm -hmm. adopted and let them know that that's their target, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, to go to their school, talk to their principal, mm -hmm. make an appointment and mm -hmm. they're the best ones because it is really detailed and uh, you know, Yes, it is very like detailed. Like the LCAP is, you know, <laughs> yes. to a certain degree. But it is mm -hmm. important if someone's interested, because mm -hmm. I would have been one of those parents, you know, explain mm -hmm. it to, I, you know, I, my hat's off to them, and I appreciate them <sighs> taking the time to do that. So I would love that if that's okay with, mm -hmm. you know, with staff. You know, I'm sure the principals, mm -hmm. you know, I, I haven't had a principal say no, they're not. They're all yet. prepared for that, actually. Right. We had a meeting with all of our principals yesterday, okay. and we discussed making sure that copies were available at the front office so that mm -hmm. they would be available to address any questions and concerns. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we want, just like with the safety plans. We want for the principals to be able to talk anyone through mm -hmm. the questions that they might have about their program exactly. because they're really the ones that understand um, their, their schools the best. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Ms. Bartow? Mrs. Bartow? Uh, yes, so um, thank you very much. It was quite mm -hmm. detailed and I have, you know, really appreciated the, the thought that went in on the part of many of the principals, um, it was clear that the, the care that was put into that. And also, I think, especially in a year with so many new principals mm -hmm. at different schools, it's a really powerful yeah. tool mm -hmm. to uh, look mm -hmm. at their goals for their school site and talk to their parents and talk to their communities. Um, and in a couple of the ones that I looked at, it was evident the kind of things that maybe didn't work out last year and that were priorities that a principal recognized in their community. So. It was mm -hmm. great to see that dynamic um, approach to such a lengthy and <coughs> kind of boilerplate document. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. In fact, what we try to do is leverage our stakeholder input process with the LCAP and the school plan at the same time because we really feel that the, what's happening at the school level is what the parents care about. And by gathering the themes of their input, we can really generalize that to the LCAP. Ms. Anderson? I wanted to thank you because you do so much work with this. Mm -hmm. And honestly, to be able to know on page 85 of a certain school, <laughs> yeah. it's really impressive. So I thank you for that. And I'm, I'll, I, I thank you for walking the principals through it. And mm -hmm. I also thank you that there's printed copies at mm -hmm. the schools. I think that that's huge. Parents mm -hmm. want to be able to have access. Mm -hmm. I disagree that it's people want more information than less information. So thank you so for doing that. Thank you. That being said, do we have a motion to approve? So much. Actually, I just have one comment. Oh, I'm, so, oh, um, the I'm sorry. Went I did, on. I sorry. Didn't have my light. It was like you and Mrs. Yeah, Yelsey had a time. Answer. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, um, in light of you know saving paper and those type of things with just making copies, some people want a paper copy. What what is the problem? Is there a problem with putting it online? Uh, um, it, does it take up? To, I'm I'm not super uh, mm -hmm. computer savvy on space, <laughs> but they're ranging anywhere from the low end of about 65 pages all the way up to I think our longest was about 135. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. it, There's but, no problem with that it. Take a lot of, I mean, but. right. But, so when we are thinking about the context of the school, we would really like to encourage people to go and talk to the principals. And sometimes what happens is if people don't get the context and have the the chance to really understand, they can misunderstand because it is very very detailed. There's a lot of things in there, and they may want to know, well, why did you get this result and not that result? So at this time, what we really want to do is encourage folks to go to the school sites. And should through stakeholder input it come to pass that that's not sufficient, we'll definitely take a look at it. But we really do want to foster that engagement at the school level, and we feel like this is a good step. But if you get a copy, you know, no, I no. mean, if somebody wants a no, they could get a there's copy. There's a copy available. Yeah. Not, oh, I thought you were making copies. copies. No, no, no. No, no, no that way they can go no. in and they can review <laughs> it and they can discuss it with the principal. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would take like a corner of it. Well, yeah. I know. Most That's people, why I was yeah. like, what? Most people want to read it, I think, to just have their questions answered, and I'm, I'm pretty sure nobody wants to read through the tomes. Um, but no, if anybody I mean, wants to talk about the LCAP. I, I, I agree <laughs> with you, but it's just so easy, it, even if it's just on each individual school site. But mm -hmm. again, I'm not an expert in how much space things take. Mm -hmm. I have so much stuff on my computer, <laughs> and it still runs. And so, I don't, it just didn't seem like a big deal. No, but, but I think mm. you're, uh, part of my, because uh -huh. we did have discussion over the years. We've been mm -hmm. doing this every year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and there's a lot um, of work from the individual sites along with the district, you know, helping with the different departments. And it is really um, something that I think the principals are, you know, for the most part, very proud of. And so mm -hmm. maybe if they went through with their, you know, with their PTAs and PFOs and mm -hmm. foundations and walked them through it, it would just be an introduction to it because it is, you know, mm -hmm. what does this mean when you get through? And if you mm -hmm. don't have the benefit, mm -hmm. you know, of having that, I'm not saying don't give them the information. I am no, not no, I, saying that. No, I know. But I think that um, I welcome our community, you know, to at least in my zone, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm sure it's the same in every zone, that people really genuinely want, you know, to be educated. And we are in the business of that. And our leadership at the site is perfect, you know. So, so your concern is by just the average parent getting the, going online and looking up things that they won't really understand uh, what I mean? How do you go? How do you have a meeting with a principal, but you really haven't reviewed it? And I, I see awesome back there. <laughs> it, it's really not about technological so it's not capacity. About space. No, it's, it's not about space. It's about the it's concern that um, if you just have this 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 document and you pull mm -hmm. it up that you're gonna, I mean, to me, I would look at it if I had questions and I would go meet with the principal. That's just me. I don't know. What does everybody else think? Uh, we well, can't decide on I've it. I've already shared what I think. Uh, yeah. Well, I think um, your light was on first. Why don't you go ahead? Well, I can comment on that as well. Yeah. I, I think that some people may misinterpret the data or ah. not, or see something in, and not understand what they're reading, I think it would be better mm -hmm. if they have questions about anything just to go in and talk to the principal and have the principal take them through it. I think that would be a great thing to sit down with the principal at a school. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, what I had my light on for was when you ha next have a principal's meeting, if you could thank the principals for doing this. I know at their school sites, it's a school site plan and it looks like other mm -hmm. people helped out and maybe they help out. But I get the strong <laughs> feeling that is, it is the principal who spends yeah. all the time sure. writing these reports, oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. they you are, are pretty, oh, yeah. pretty amazing. So um, please thank them. And for, before I done. vent to Mrs. Floor, um, there's parts of it that are very easy to understand. There's parts of it that are like the beginning of the budget book that says, here's our school, we're wonderful, this is how many kids go here. A lot of it is populated with data from the state, and we know the d state doesn't care whether we understand their data. So. <laughs> That part would definitely, I would have wanted. And speaking as principals, absolutely. Thank them because we know that the LCAP has to be done in the fall and the site safety plans have to be done in the fall and these have mm -hmm. to be done in the fall and that we're hoping that after winter break they can see their families again, <laughs> as will you. Um, it, it is a daunting task, but mm. as you said, we have so many new principals. This is a great way to know. My other comment was, don't school site councils have to Okay, so there is a group at the school that does have to approve them, 
Mm -hmm. So they've read them in detail. Uh, and maybe. Well, every school site council I was able to chair, I hoped I could just say, isn't it great? Will you sign it? No, I need more copies and can we do it? And that's good. That's what you want. And I would let my first crack would probably be the PTA and say, hi, I made this. It's in the office. If you want to come talk to me, I can talk to you. So it's up to the sites to do that, to share mm -hmm. it that way. But and I'm sure there's also copies will be available, in, at least in Spanish, for the schools that are totally, are very heavily bilingual. So we probably don't have Lithuanian. Um, I keep asking because I have a daughter-in-law now that's Lithuanian. <laughs> Mrs. Floor. I think, um, Vicki, what we talked about also was that it's like any email that you get and you read it and there's no tonality. It's Thank black you. and white. What was said may have been there, but there's a nuance to it, and I think it's an opportunity for the, you know, the the words are carefully selected, but they can be misread um, in there, and I think it's an opportunity for our, our our community to get to know their schools, and their principal to shine and really exp explain those nuances because you know, it may be that it's red on the dashboard, it may show a red, but it. When they explain it and say, well, it's red, it's one student. It's one student. Yeah. It's not It's not 50% of the students. It's one student that caused the red. So that can't be explained on 68 pages when they're just looking at the dashboard. It really takes a one-on-one. -on -one that one student. And that one-on-one. On, one on one. I'm not saying that. We can have a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to beat this horse. Okay. <laughs> so Mrs. Anyone? Bartow. I don't want to beat the horse either, um, but as the parent um, <laughs> on the board, um, I like the idea of having it online. I understand that we want to communicate because in some of the plans I read, they're dropping, you can only have so many goals. You can't have five goals in some sections. You can have one or the other. Um, some of the plans I read, they're dropping what would seem to many to be a very important goal in favor of something else that is mm -hmm. important at their school site. So. I love the idea of having the access, but I also think it is so important for that parent to talk to the principal because at a school where they're maybe dropping one goal in favor of, say, more emphasis on orchestra, that's wonderful. But if you're the parent who only reads the first part, you're going to go, oh, no, like that's a really important part. Mm -hmm. So um, I know the model's changing. Maybe when we're going through that new model next year for that mm -hmm. we do like a cover sheet that we send out that is mm -hmm. part of like next year's plan that's just like you know here's what it means here's why you should talk to your principal and mm -hmm. here's the goal we're highlighting and like maybe that school site does the goal we're highlighting for the next year that being said do i have a motion to approve the school did we do that i don't have it written down as who did who motion to approve thank you mrs second y'all see thank you mrs black i don't <coughs> all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I follow up with a sports analogy? Yes. Because I, sure. you know, uh, as a middle school Please. teacher, I always yeah. use sports. Uh, <laughs> did you know that uh, all football teams have a playbook, mm -hmm. right? And it's the most important document on that team. So all footballs have a playbook. Uh, did you know that when a football player gets traded from one team to another, they don't can't read that playbook? And it's a whole idea of context and how that oh. that plan is designed. The new team, they can't. They, they can't read the new. It. They don't understand the new team, even though they may run the same plays. They have a different context. They have a different set of priorities. They have a different way of uh, calling the same play, because and so the most difficult problem, especially the quarterback, if he gets traded to a new organization, is to learn yeah. the new playbook. So yeah. our te our budgets are like playbooks. And not every single one, even though they seem similar, they have, just like everybody said, there are new nuances. And like Mrs. Bartow said, there are reasons you pick certain priorities and don't. And it's always really, really good to have a coach to help you. Cool. All righty. 18B, Dr. Navarro. Okay. I have a little uh, long story well, background to give you here. 19. 19B. I am so sorry. It's it's on my little thing. It's 19, and then it goes into 18s again. It's just a typo. 19B. Go, Dr. Navarro. Okay, so uh, I'm going to introduce this item, uh, and uh, I'm going to go back, way back to uh, the Great Recession. Uh, during the Great Recession, uh, those board members that were on 
uh, on the board will remember there were many casualties that uh, uh, befell the, uh, the budget acts. Uh, you know, we lost uh, categoricals. Mm -hmm. we, we lost uh, funding for programs like busing and transportation. One of the casualties was our ROP program. Uh, it used to be that the state would funnel ROP money through us that we would pass on to ROPs. And, and then, because they were getting state money, they were a state agency. They had all the same rules and expectations as the school district. Well, as a result of the, uh, the Great Recession, the state took all that money away because they had to fill all of the necessary uh, uh, funding needs. Uh, and so they just took that money away and I remember uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Hume's uh, predecessor coming into my office saying, hey, uh, we have to have an agreement now. <laughs> we have to have a joint powers agreement because uh, you don't have to give us this money. Uh, and so we want to continue to offer these services. So our very first agreement was that pretty much that way. She came to each of the five schools and, and uh, we signed an agreement that we all agreed to to continue funding us at the level that was prior to the state taking us away. Five school districts. Five school districts. Oh, did I say five schools? schools? I meant five school districts. Thank you, Ms. Black. Um, so, and we have been in a huge transition. Uh, and, you know, as a principal, and a principal who was right next to Presidio, I really loved having the ROP program right next to me because I could send as many kids as I could to their programs, as well as the programs we offered on our campus. And I'll tell you why I like that. Because ROP, uh, they provide instructors who come from that world. So if you wanna learn about uh, nursing, you work with an instructor who's a nurse. They have experience. So as a teacher, we get hired on our credential and our, and our, and our, and our transcript. As an ROP teacher, you get hired on your resume and what you've done and what you've been able to produce. So it brings a different, a different perspective to learning. Uh, our kids, when they go to automotive class, they are learning from top mechanics. They're not learning from somebody who learned about mechanics in a classroom. They are actually working with people <coughs> who are working with current technology and current demands on the job. Um, so it plays a very, very important role for us to bring richness and depth to our pathway programs. And that's been our partnership the last few years is they've been enhancing our pathways, our CTE pathways. Um, we have this great partnership, uh, but it costs. We have to pay for their teachers. There are services they provide in support of those teachers. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, we got together and, and I, wanna, I wanna thank uh, Carol Hume for her leadership this past a year. She brought us together in the spring and said, how are we gonna do this? And everybody was there and we all had skin in the game and every superintendent from every district, we sat with, with Carol and we had some pretty difficult discussions. And I gotta tell you, uh, uh, she really came and bared everything. Uh, it used to be, and so for example, today you approved the uh, agreement for our uh, 1920 program. And that's the way it's always been. We've always uh, approved that right about this time because that's when we learn how many sections we're gonna have and what the pass through is gonna be. And so everybody's, you know, everything can be accurate on the budget. Our new agreement has us, a, 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 she's giving us an expected cost and budget a year, a, a, a semester in advance. So now we know ahead of time what we're gonna be paying for and what we have to pay for. And then what we also have, we also have an opportunity to work with ROP and decide if there's 10% of the, up to 10% of the classes, whether we wanna continue them or not. So we can move our focus and we can also ask them to, working with them, how can we modify or personalize the program to better enhance our pathways? Uh, and what the big issue was, and I'm just gonna be honest, is uh, we wanted to know the cost because we never knew the cost. Uh, and I know that I was a thorn in Carol's side uh, <laughs> asking her, well, can, what's the budget? How do you figure this out? How do you do that? Well, when she came down and went with all of us, she provided all that. It was all laid out for all the superintendents. We sat there, we worked with her, uh, and she really uh, sacrificed a lot of what uh, her 
uh, her team had in reserves to make this possible. So uh, I'm really proud that we now know what a unit's costing us, and a unit, what I mean by that is a section. Um, and I, we know that how many of our kids are in our sections, how many of the kids from other schools are in our sections, and how many of our kids are in their sections. So for example, the automotive program, we have what, 14, 15, or maybe 19 of our students in Huntington Beach's ROP automotive program. They've got 10 in our fire science program. So that's a mutually beneficial thing. And I want to thank, thank Carol for bringing us all together and building that camaraderie and, and support between the districts because we all are sharing kids. They're all going to our after school programs. Uh, and uh, so this is going to be a very different process now. It's going to be very transparent. We're going to know right about now what our costs are going to be for the following year. I know I've kept Jeff uh, 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 in, in, uh, involved, and I know that that cost me some time. You know, Carol would say, are you done yet? Are you done? Well, I haven't heard talk to Jeff yet. I haven't talked to Jeff yet. I wasn't going to do anything without Jeff. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so he would say, yeah, this works out. This is accurate. This is good. Uh, so the, what you're approving tonight is the new model, the new model. So we will know exactly the cost, and I know that Carol's made a commitment to continue to work with all the superintendents to continue to get us the best cost factor for the greatest service for our students. And, uh, and I know that uh, she's also allowed us to um, ask her to give higher salaries to high, hard to hire uh, uh, ROP teachers. For example, we keep losing our engineering science teachers, mm -hmm. uh, our computer science engineering class teachers. They go to private industry because they get paid so much more. And Carol's allowed us to raise the bar on salary, even though we have to pay for it. But we're going to be paying for continuity and consistency in that program. So um, I bring to you the new agreement. Um, and it is a complicated document. So if you have questions, be happy to. But also, if you want to spend more time talking about this document, we can do that anytime. We can spend uh, go into depth, and I'm sure Carol and her team would be happy to come come someday too, and just go through the whole document in detail with you. Uh, and I know that I'm just uh, boring uh, Mrs. Floor because she's been in, <laughs> no, she's been getting these reports as your crop representative for the last six months. Uh, but again, my hats off to Carol Hume, who uh, really was courageous and uh, and really bared her 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 information to all the superintendents and. Uh, I think we all responded with a real positive, uh, yeah, we're here as a team and we're going to work together because there's really great benefits for our kids here. Okay, are we going to hear from you? Yes. So, so I, I'm going to ask Michael to come up and ask uh, Carol to come up and uh, maybe share some more information, some more details. I, I know we typically move second and then listen, but I like listening and then we'll move in second. Well, good evening, uh, <laughs> President Matoye, uh, Superintendent Navarro, uh, Board of Trustees, Cabinet members, and all of the other attendees still in the audience. Um, thank you for your kind remarks, Dr. Navarro, but um, he's shortchanging himself in all of this. He was very instrumental in bringing everybody together and helping us find consensus. And then I also have to thank uh, our trustee Floor for her continued support for all the years she's been on our school board. She's been um, just incredible and a wonderful advocate for students and our program. So I'd like to start by thanking um, the two of you and then I know we've had tremendous support from the board and the staff at Newport Mesa. We've offered um, worked in collaboration with the, the team here and I'm really proud of the offerings that we have in the district and as uh, Superintendent Navarro indicated it was a very complicated funding system uh, that we had before and we listened to all of the partners and uh, they wanted it to be transparent and equitable and um, simple in this day and age when everything is so complicated. And so I feel really good about our new model. And uh, it is, um, I think there's a lot more flexibility in it for all the partners. Uh, and uh, again, we're just here to serve the best interests of your districts and our students. 
And we will continue to um, look at the new funding model and assess it each year to see if we need to make some adjustments to it. I mean, we've been funded one way since 1971. <laughs> and uh, so this is a big change for all of us. And uh, we think we've covered all the bases, but sometimes uh, you miss something. So we will look at it annually with all of the districts and uh, ensure that everybody's needs are still being met. Did you have anything you no, wanted no, to say? Sir. Okay. And I don't know if the, anyone has any questions. Ms. Lights are on. Mrs. Oh, goody. <laughs> Mrs. Ford. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I do want to say a couple of things. Um, this has been an ongoing process for about two years when um, the ROP board started looking at our funding because as we were funded strange, um, <laughs> Lee, um, because we had different types of teachers. We had district teachers teaching ROP, we had ROP teachers, ROP, then we had ROP teachers that we hired district, I mean, it was just a whole mess. Um, and so we started talking to it, uh, talking, but it took, um, we brought an outside consultant in with school services to start the process, the conversations, and then it got to the point where um, our board said, you need to talk to the soups um, because Many of the <laughs> district people were in just, they were looking at bottom line number, they were looking at numbers and not students and what we were offering. Um, so it really did take the superintendents and I agree, Carol, it was thanks to Dr. Navarro and getting, making sure that there was some behind the scenes talking um, to those individuals. But I, I do have to give our district kudos because we started this process by establishing the career, um, college and career office. Not every district has that. We are the only district, in fact, that has had it for five years. Um, so that really started us. We are far and above, um, so far ahead of every other um, district in our joint powers agreement. Um, and as you look at the numbers, we are far and above the greatest we offer the greatest number of sections um, that, that we service our, our students. And, and so it has been a process. There is going to be some sacrifices um, being made at the, at the ROP level. Um, and we're gonna be dealing with that because we are going into, we are significantly deficit <laughs> spending um, and we're going into our, into our reserves to, to, to manage this. Um, the Crop 20 reserves? Crop reserves. Thank you. The $28,000 <laughs> per section is an average. There are, there are sections that are way more than that, um, and there are sections that are less than that, but we felt that the 28000 was a reasonable amount of money. That includes the instructor. Um, uh, our instructors are not on, um, they're not union contracted. They don't, they're, not a, they're not a union, so, um, which provides us the f flexibility to, if, a, if we don't have enough students and the district doesn't have enough students, we can, we can, we can drop that class and, and move it to something else. Um, and there have been times. Um, and our, our breadth of offerings has expanded because we take a look at what the work, workplace is about. And so we meet that. And I thank uh, uh, Michael who sits on um, the steering committee. So he's always there um, having conversations and meeting with the principals and so. I think this is a good deal for us. And not to mention that we just, we're picking up another great deal with uh, Lisa Snowden. We're, I'm, I'm, imagine my surprise on that one. Yeah. I'm happy for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not happy for ROP, which no. hat should I wear? No, no, that, it's, it's a good move for Ms. her, so. Mrs. Black. <laughs> Yeah, I I know how much work has gone because you know, like Mrs. Floor, this is a passion of mine for secondary, and congratulations, you know, to working it out. I was holding my breath, you yeah. know, and it's nice. such a positive thing. I believe that this is the future of secondary ed. You know, is having a, a strong part of the pathway, you know, in um, industry. So it's it's really important to me. However. I know how things go and how our calendars go and whatnot, and I'm going to support this. But on the you know stipulation that we have a study session, I I felt like I knew this stuff inside and out, and and I pretty much did the old. But there are a lot of 
um, not necessarily changes, but and not necessarily restrictions, but um, you know, there it's. It, I don't know how to explain it because I don't understand it. And if I don't, I know that my you know colleagues don't. And we've talked about having a study session, and and I know that you know now that Dr. Um, Navarro has gone through with the other superintendents, I have talked to other districts that are in fact doing um, study sessions. I believe we really need to commit to th this is huge. And in order for us to be successful, I think every person on this board needs to fully understand where we're at, where we're going, and you know, and also the future. I mean, we have a huge future possibilities with grants. And I mean, we just approved another, you know. I mean, you know, that's, it's been really wonderful. So I would like a commitment, <coughs> you know, and not a year from January. It needs to be, because I do believe that we have to have this in. You know, if we're, if we're going to make any changes or whatnot, I think it, what I read, and I may have misunderstood it, <laughs> but by February, we need to, if we are going to make any changes working, you know, with anything, we need to know. Well, that, that's in terms of courses. Well. No, I understand that, but we yeah. don't know. I mean, I don't know the, yeah. you know, criteria for that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm reading it, and it's, and it's pretty laid out, but, but it's, um, I think we all need at least this board member. I can only yeah, speak I'm for me. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So, so. Yeah, before I go to Mrs. Yelsey, I just want to thank the whole concept of ROP. One of the questions we get, and I will say we get often, is, well, what happened to shop classes and what happened mm -hmm. to the things? I mean, I was I liked being able to make that coffee table for my family when I was in high school. <laughs> That's where I got my love for electronics and. My response is, there's no way with today's technology school districts can afford to keep up. Auto shop isn't taking apart a, an engine and putting it back together again. It's hooking it up to the computers anymore. and trying to figure all this stuff out. I can do that job. I can't do the job now. Without that, we wouldn't have that piece of practical learning that's quite obvious what you have to do. And that is a love of so many of our students. That, I mean, there's things like graphic design. It doesn't have to be our, one of our shop classes. So I am grateful for ROP from its inception, its collaboration to keep, because we are much richer being five districts than just one. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really glad that we can, as a group, offer these classes to our students that none of us on, on our own could possibly. But believe me, I ask. I do. I, oh. wa I keep saying, I want one. Of course you do. <laughs> right? She this does. Is <laughs> Your turn. Yeah, I also want to thank you for this and also thank Michael and CTE and the entire group that, as Mrs. Flores says, has been working for the last five years because many people think that these ROP classes are only offered maybe at a couple of schools or for kids who may not even be interested in four-year colleges, um, which is not the case. And if you look at the list of programs throughout our district, they're pretty evenly spread out um, among all four of our comprehensive high schools. So it wasn't anything you were saying. It wasn't anything mm -hmm. you were saying. I was mumbling, and I'm sorry. Um, I distract you. Anyway, so I just I, I think it's important that people in the community realize that it does affect students across the board in mm -hmm. our district. I was mumbling about technology. <clears throat> and just so that you're aware, just in case, because I thought, gee, hmm, if we're the only one and we're that great, we should be getting a golden bell for this. And I probably involves mounds of paperwork. So in advance, I'm apologizing. <laughs> oh, with that. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Mrs. Black, seconded by Mrs. Floor. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And okay. Sherry will work with uh, Carol's assistant, and we'll get something scheduled uh, in probably in early January. Okay, if great. If that's okay. Absolutely. Carol, is that Thank okay you. with you? Yeah, oh, Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate we your support. WASC? Are we getting ready for WASC, too? Uh, it's the I don't following think you have spring, to go to yes, WASC. Okay. And may I just say, I think oh. you're now the fifth district who approved it. Um, so, um, we're sure. we're hallelujah. Good. <laughs> we're, good. we're good to go. Good to go. And thank you, Dr. Barmeister, for the, for the tidier update on the
classes that we requested, so we appreciate that. that was Can great. we get that posted on, on the website? Because I think it's, um, with, well, because the, I mean, the, the numbers of students, where, um, for example, at Estancia, we have 538 <laughs> students. Uh, Newport Harbor okay. has 618 but students. Colonel Del Mar, 248, and Costa Mesa, 539. That's pretty impressive. Mr. Boss, and that's not just that's that they count hours differently. Students. Do we have a CTE portion on our webpage? Do we have a CTE section? A CTE? Oh, that would be a Is good place for it. It will be soon. <laughs> Dr. Sir, you missed our wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to respond first? I was just going to say that I sent it to Michael because I wanted him to cross check and to make oh. sure I didn't miss any as well. I just pulled those out of Aries from each school. Oh, so um, there's a little bit of work I think that needs to be done on it, uh, but it's it pretty close. Friendly. Perfect. Um, Dr. Sir, you missed our wonderful elementary portion of systems. So if you'd like to share with us what you were going to say, we'd all love to hear it. Yeah, I didn't get to hear all the reports, but I'm certainly happy to uh, give a, a little bit of information as far as my perspective yesterday on the board study session. Um, I really appreciate the work that we're doing around systems in regards to elementary education. And really, I, I thought about this, four different um, entities that are working very closely together. District personnel, uh, teachers on special assignment, principals, and teachers. And there really is a nice... Uh, cohesion and a nice system occurring in which district personnel, examples yesterday were Vanessa Gailey and Laura Dale Pash, working very closely with teachers on special assignment and working with principals, especially in our Title I schools. And along with that, you have TOSAs working very tightly with teachers and TOSAs working very tightly with principals. I thought that both uh, Ray Elementary School with Dr. Cox and Victoria School with Dr. Peralta really went into some depth and really dug in to some of those fine nuanced pieces in regards to three areas. Core access for students to complex text, which is a very important thing for all students to have the access to be reading passages on a routine basis of text that is appropriate to their grade level. And then in regards to the reading foundational skills, I really appreciate the work that we have in regards to systems. We, uh, Martha, I think, asked a question about <laughs> the concept of master schedules when in mm -hmm. elementary schools. And it really is fascinating to look at a school and what they design in looking at their master schedule in regards to where is it that SIPs and reading foundational skills rotations are occurring for students. And also within that master schedule, Another, um, another arm, if you will, is English language development. Where is it that designated ELD is fitting into that master schedule? And not one of those entities, not teachers, not the district office, not the TOSAs, and not the principals can do it alone. So when we talk about those systems, it's really all four of those groups working very, very closely together with the support of the board because all of this isn't possible without approval of a lot of the different programs and things that we do. So I just really appreciate where we're at right now. And I, I also appreciate the fact that there's still a lot of work to do. So this isn't going to stop. We're, it's almost like in some ways we're just getting started, but it takes the systems to really try to make it happen. So I left there feeling really good about um, the work that everyone's doing and Vanessa Gailey and Laura Dale Pash leading that work in English language arts and English language development is really making a big difference for our students. That being said, I thought you might want to add to, we had some really good news about some Title I schools that we had, didn't we? Recently, about this nomination, not this, not the finish, but we had four wonderful California new pieces Red. of news, right? Didn't you want to take that as part of your report? Did you guys already discuss that? No? Nope. Nope. Okay. We're, nope. That's that's why I was asking. Yeah. So he's looking. Yeah. Too so super yeah. Can I say this? I, yeah. I, I won't ask you if I haven't asked first. So yeah. Say. No. We we are very excited to announce that uh, Killybrook Elementary School. Uh, Sonora Elementary School and Paularino Elementary School California. and California. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a uh, 
it's not it's, a it's really it's it's really interesting to look at what the requirements are to meet it and there's two different categories and i haven't yet seen the reports of uh the two different ways that a school can become a california distinguished school but we we know that it's very different than the um uh, gold ribbon awards and it's very different than what the previous uh, california distinguished awards look like so there's still a little bit for us to learn but I think what they've done is really raise the bar. So for those schools to meet the requirements of what now the California Distinguished School is asking for, it's a, it's a pretty rigorous bar. So there's a lot to celebrate in all of those schools. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have the uh, district working with um, our consultants as well to help with the grant writing process and making that happen for the school. So we're, they're eligible. We're applying, we're working on it, we have teams working on it, and uh, we're gonna be optimistic that it's going to happen for all four. I wanna let you know that uh, many superintendents at our meeting complained about the rigorous selection process mm -hmm. because they felt a lot of their high-end schools didn't get recognized mm -hmm. because now the stakes are a little different and it's more about what you're doing with your kids than what you achieve because it's not, you know, sometimes Sometimes you can have students who are going to do really well, no despite what. who's in front of them, <laughs> like the kids who went through my classes. <laughs> uh, or you have kids who really do well because of the work that you're doing at a site. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, dis 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 disenchantment with uh, the fact that uh, schools that had perennially been named as distinguished schools were not nominated this time. So uh, we're really proud of the, our four nominees, and as soon as they get their paperwork in, we'll find out if they make it all the way. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, board members, it's time for our report, and if you would like, if you're on a committee and want to give that report simultaneously, I think that's just fine. Um, we haven't done it in a while. Mrs. Snell, we're gonna start with you. Okay. So um, one of my committee reports, uh, Newport Mesa Schools Foundation I went to their meeting. Um, the, it, there was only like five of us there because everybody was out of town for some reason. Um, but we uh, discussed the recent state of the school's breakfast and um, they went over what they thought went well and what they thought needed improvement. Um, they love having it at Estancia because it has a really large gym. And so they were able to sell 288 seats, which is a lot. Um, they um, wanted, um, and they got $15,000 in sponsorships. So there was a lot, um, and they and they loved working with Mrs. Franco and uh, her team. So it went really well. Um, also, I wanted to thank Dr. Navarro and Mr. Lee Sung for meeting with same people. Um, they are refining, um, updating their uh, grants, um, what is, um, what we should be, what they should be uh, funding in grants. In relation to technology, things have changed a lot and um, so it was a great opportunity for them to find out what um, we're providing, what the classrooms really need and um, so I think we're gonna make it a yearly thing. That was a great meeting. They great were amazing. Meeting. Their questions were spot on and they really, really wanna make things work for everybody. So they it was do. a privilege to sit in the room with them. Thank you, thank you for getting us together. That's one of the best meetings we've had with them it ever. It was good and they, they appreciated all your help and um, Russell's help, so. Um, also, um, I attended the Estancia High School PTSA meeting last night, and um, I think it was last night, I can't remember, <laughs> it was recent, very recent, um, and their SRO <laughs> was there, and he provided a lot of great insight into for the parents into what he does, uh, what is important about his relationship with the students, building um, a good, um, a good relationship with the police, but also uh, being someone that a, a, a student can go to if they see something bad happening and they and so they have a trust in the students. And um, I ran the policeman. Um, and um, he also talked about his training. They get special training to be an SRO. So that was interesting. Um, 
Uh, also, I went to California and Teewinkle for site visits, and I wanted to thank Mr. Longacre and Dr. DePauly. Um, it was uh, really interesting to sit down with them and um, talk about their goals, and I pretty much just listened. Um, I asked um, what were some things that we could do to help, and um, they both really, um, as I'm sure a lot of elementary school teachers, or, or administration teachers, uh, want um, a full-time social worker, that they really need um, that support, that part-time is just, um, but, but they're thankful for everything we do, so I don't wanna throw anybody under the bus here. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to suggest that we give our student board members some sort of a task. I mean, I, tonight we talked about coming up with some incentives uh, to take the S back, but I, I think um, it would be nice as a semester project to come up with something for them to bring back to us from the students like an issue they'd like us to work on. I mean, I'm open to whatever, um, maybe you can all think about it, but um, I would like to see something, they present something to us briefly, not like, you know, like five minutes or, you know, of what they'd like to see, <coughs> see us work on or what is not working, but more with the district, not just in their school, more with, more with the district flair. Okay, um, and also I have a suggestion um, on resolutions. Um, and of course, this is something that everybody also has to think about. Um, I, I really like when the resolutions are introduced separately and somebody gives a two minute thing about it. Like this is, I, I mean, I can read that deal, but it's nice um, if, you know, Jeff, uh, Mr. Trader, or somebody, that something comes up in a resolution, they just talk about what it's about very briefly, and that we, and that we vote on it at that time, rather than um, just everything coming up and it's mixed up and the first one's talking about, somebody's talking about the first one or the I second know. one. Anyway, that's just my two cents on that. And finally, um, I, I'd like to talk about the possibility of um, changing our February 25th um, um, cl study session. Um, I would really, um, I've, and I've gone to this before, I haven't gone in a couple of years, but I would really like to go to Sacramento Safari, and I know Michelle is interested. It's, I, I mean, I've praised this before. Um, it is one of the most uh, comprehensive um, your speakers are great about what's going on, and it's and you're in. It's only one night, so you're in and you're out. It's intensive, but um, anyway. Oh. Dr. Navarro said, "Okay, you just want to change the date, right?" Oh yeah. Okay, that's fine. Oh, yeah. No, I want to move it to Sacramento. <laughs> Ooh, road trip. Okay, well, yeah, <laughs> we'll get you up there and back in one day. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, you leave like. Your plane leaves at like 7.30. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you've been before. And then well, the next it. day you rush to the airport, and, but it's just so good. So, okay, that's it. Lots. This I know. Garto. All right, so I'm gonna do both. Mm -hmm. uh, I attended the Newport Heights Jogathon this past week. It was mm. great. It was the first year I didn't run alongside the kids. Somehow I got out of that one, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll be attending the Newport Harbor's um, Spelling Bee as a former Orange County Spelling Bee contestant myself. I'm excited to see the Putnam <laughs> County Spelling Bee play. Um, and I also to attend the Ensign Turkey Trot and then go to Newport Ells Jogathon. Um, talking about legislation, not a ton that's new since the last time that I've talked about, but some good things that I um, want to highlight are the, we do a, a good job, and especially with the mental health task force, it's becoming more um, part of legislation to post bullying and harassment policies and really um, have a lot more information about that posted related to preventing that and who, um, you know, what discrimination looks like. So we've done some good work in that area as well, but um, it's gonna be part of law that we'll have to make sure that we're in compliance with. 
Um, and then one thing that I think is great is in terms of student ID cards, we've talked about this for a while, PTA talked about this as for a while, is having um, the uh, suicide hotline on the back of student ID cards. So that law, that bill has passed. Um, so we'll be seeing that coming as well. Then um, <coughs> a lot of the other stuff is, oh, one of the things that they highlighted, which um, I think is a great opportunity for students who uh, are on probation for some reason or another is the state is now um, requiring that per Bill AB 982 that uh, homework be provided to students who are suspended if they can request that um, if they wish. So that a new update. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. That last part in there. I'm, <laughs> laugh, I'm laughing. I can just say, oh, can I have homework? I, please, that, I mean, please. That's, that's, <laughs> I was thinking that too. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but, but you know, some people, yes. you know, might wish yeah. to ask, and if that isn't legally an option to be provided, maybe they wouldn't get that and may miss mm -hmm. out. So it's a good um, mm -hmm. may support. May not want it, but mom may want it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, really quickly, I am really excited that we voted for the resolution for mental health. I think one of the things we've seen it happen, um, we've seen a lot of need for it in our schools, but um, I've been looking at it nationally as well, and Orange County really leads the nation in mental health needs. And so I think having finally the Board of Supervisors release more money, but also our whole board, I think is really behind supporting our students and our staff as much as possible. So I am really excited about that. Um, I am grateful that we were able to have the students um, who are English language learners um, study session yesterday. And there are still some things that I had more information that I wanted to get. So I wanted to get more information about the full Title I funds um, and what is allocated to what, and also for the Title III funds. Um, there are certain sections that were actually missing in our budget, so I wasn't sure what the percentages were. Um, so I wanted to go back and check on that. Um, and then I just wanted to read, I handed out um, to our board members, but I'm not sure if they got a chance to read it because it was deep, like page eight of um, the CSBA's, it was two years old now, it's from February um, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, but when Proposition 58 was voted in was 73% of the vote. Um, that changed the conversation from our schools being English only to really having a bigger push for having multi-language support for a lot of our schools. Um, LA Unified actually has a goal that the kindergarten class starting in 2018-19 would all be graduating biliterately. Um, and I think it's not just for West Side schools, I think it's something that I was able to visit um, Norway this year and they speak five languages and they start in third grade. So I think that <laughs> Overall, having more than one language is a benefit and an asset, like the um, roadmap points out. But I think to have us really move from um, the old policy and the old way of doing things from the English learner roadmap. So um, I'm just gonna read really briefly because we did not get to this yesterday. Um, so the old policy and practice and current practice is prescriptive, mandate-driven compliance focus on exactly what schools need. And the new roadmap policy is setting a vision and a mission for California schools with research-based principles to guide local planning and continuous improvement. The old policy and our current practice is K-12 systems focus and the um, English language roadmap is, includes explicit recognition of early childhood education as a crucial part of the system. Um, the old policy is English learners as a Title III issue only or isolated compliance, the responsibility of only ELD teachers and EL specialists. And the new is English learners as central to practice woven throughout the LCAP, everyone's responsibility. The old being a focus on English proficiency only, the new being a focus on English proficiency plus proficiency in multiple languages, and recognition of the role in home language support in English and overall literacy. The old one size fits all programs and approaches, the new responsive, responsive to diverse EL needs, which I think we see that particularly at our high school level, um, the need for that. So the old college and career readiness as a goal, 
the new college and career readiness and preparation for civic participation in a global, diverse, multilingual 21st century world. The old focus on lack of <coughs> English proficiency, i.e. what the students don't have in deficiency orientation. The new value and build on the linguistic and cultural assets that our students bring using a culturally responsive curriculum and instruction. The old, there's only two more, no mention of the school climate or of a commitment to schools to be welcoming, safe, and inclusive of our English learners. The new, focus on safe, affirming, and welcoming school climate and culture. The old ELD is where and how English learners develop English proficiency. The new model, language development in and through content integrated across the curriculum, integrated ELD along with designated ELD. We're doing that. Structured English immersion, immersion as a default program or English learners have choice of research-based language acquisition programs, including options for developing proficiency in multiple languages. And the last, the old no focus on knowledge and skills of leadership and administration regarding EELs, and the new explicit commitment to leadership knowledgeable and responsive to our English learners. So I am really excited to hear that we are starting to put together um, LPAC parent resource packets. I think that's something huge for our parents to be able to know exactly how, what, is, what their children will be tested on. Um, but I just, I'm excited about the first steps, but we have some ways to go. So I'm glad that we have the roadmap ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> You're so excited about that. Um, I will give my uh, committee report first. I'm on the wellness committee, and we only meet twice a year. So it's Dale Ellis, who is a head of nutrition services, giving updates, and people who work with her and some of our part, outside partners. Um, so she gave an update, and this is how I knew about the, the meals. In the summer food service, we served 14,000 lunches and 6,000 breakfasts at Ray Costa Mesa High School and at the uh, Costa Mesa Public Library, which is a lot. Um, and the leftovers are all taken to nonprofits, so it goes to good use. Um, the human re one of the things that came out from the Human Relations Task Force, and I remember uh, when they discussed this, was they requested of Dale that um, she include cultural awareness in the menus. Right. And so she started doing that and um, just in November, but she started with World Kindness Day and with uh, Dia de los uh, Muertos. And so she's going to continue to do that throughout the year with different That's events, good. which is really nice. Um, they are always working on new menus because quite often, especially elementary school kids, mm -hmm. don't like menus. And they're working on some really <laughs> cool things for snacks, like goldfish and yogurt. Ooh, I mean, they didn't have this way back yet, then. But they really do try to, I know, they really do try to come up with items that that the kids would like, would so I think that's eat. true, yeah. that, that they will eat. Uh, Pam Williams, who works with Dale, is amazing in what she does at all our school sites. And as she says, she is willing to go anywhere for nutrition ed education. So any school who wants her to come out, talk to parents, talk to the kids, she's more than willing to do, and schools should take advantage of that. And one of the outside partners who was there was the American Heart Association. They have a kids' heart challenge, and they're inviting any school to participate, and it's free of charge. They will come out and do a program, like at uh, uh, in uh, Flag Deck or whenever the schools want it, about um, the kids' heart challenge, and it um, promotes wellness, kindness, uh, kindness challenges, and aligns with STEM. So. Um, Pam was going to contact all the principals about that. I took the information and gave it to the principals who were at the CDM Zone Pack. Mm. Um, so they're all aware of it. And Anderson already participates. But it's a great program, and it's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it's really get good for the kids. So then um, moving along with that, um, we had it at the Corona Del Mar Zone Pack. And for those of you who are not aware, 
It is a program that um, we have in the CDM zone that includes all the principals of all the elementary schools, <coughs> the middle school, the high school, and all the PTA presidents of those selective schools. And we had, um, it is, I just noticed Carol Crane is in the audience. It, it's yep. chaired this year by Carol um, at CDN, at CDM. And we have a, we had a really robust conversation um, about parents being involved. And I think I mentioned this at the last meeting, that's something that's really bothersome to me right now because our community especially is, um, has really been affected by the loss of so many kids uh, very recently and in the last couple of years. And in fact, when we went around the room and talked about it, um, some of the principals who have really been effective had got very emotional about it. And they too want something done. And one of the things that's happening is um, affecting this, but not because of this. As part of Challenge Success, they have a book club. And this month, they're reading The Collapse of Parenting. It's by um, Len Sachs, I believe is his name. He's a psychologist. And it really is a, it's a must read for probably not only high school parents, but also every elementary school parent. And my feeling about all this is we can talk to the high schools about what we can do, because the elephant in the room, which was mentioned then, is at, the, at this meeting, was permissive parents and parties at their houses. And something has to be done. And we can do, as a board or a district, what we can to help educate and inform parents and help them find solutions. But they've got to be part of the solution as well. And I feel really strongly about it. Um, I bought a copy of the book and gave it to each of the elementary principals because I thought if they could get, if they could read it and get into it and invite their parent community to either come to the CDM um, book club or do something on their own, and they are, all the all the schools pledge mm -hmm. to do something within the next this school year to talk about this issue with their parents. But it's time that we really need to do something because I don't think any of us want to see another child in this community lost. So um, that's my report on that. And on a little happier note, I attended Mrs. Matoye as well, the Reflections um, exhibit over at Sanborn. I don't know if anybody else is here. Is we were here at the same time. Um, last week and the entries were pretty amazing yeah. they were very special and i also was a judge at newport coast so it was mm. fun to see one of the one of the uh paintings that i judge very highly she <laughs> got a first place and it was oh. nice and this weekend i stopped by the newport harbor high school uh, holiday boutique where 15 percent <laughs> of the of the proceeds were given back to the high school they had, I don't know, they must have had like 50 vendors there. Yeah, I did some damage, I helped them out, so it was, it was really good. good. for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's my report. Okay, real, um, first and foremost, I, you know, um, Tamara Banks was one of our teachers of the year, and I was so lucky mm -hmm. as, you know, to go to the Disneyland Hotel and celebrate. And I sat with Colleen Tullis as well. She was another, she, now, she's department head at Ensign and teacher. And um, Tamara was gorgeous in her beautiful <laughs> gown and uh, really enjoyed the time. And um, I know Dr. Navarro and Michelle and I, um, and, it, and it's, it is lovely, it's long. But it's you know, but they do a good, <laughs> but they do a really good job, you know, celebrating the teachers. So that, and then also um, Costa Mesa United Sports Committee. Um, I'm not going to get into detail, other yeah, than sports. to say yeah. their committee um, that November is planning month for the district. So if you are sports and um, um, community and schools and whatnot, that is the month that. They are, our district collectively looks at the coming year, you know, for sports. And I think it'll be really helpful. Again, kudos to, you know, Mr. Bauermeister and also to Lance, um, part of our MNL, 
they, they really, you know, it's really made a big difference because if everybody's on the same page, it really helps those, um, you know, organizations and coaches and athletic directors. And um, so really, I think it's great to have that, at least target. I know we're going to not be 100% all the time, but at least you know, we're going to get started there. So kudos to them for that. And there was a lot of other things that maybe Ms. Charlene could talk about. Um, no, I'm happy with you doing it. Okay, well, that was, I mean, I think that's a, you know, really huge deal. And then we also um, got to attend, uh, um, we have a, a network that we do um, quarterly with um, all the different utilities, the city of Costa Mesa and the, and the district participate. So we have um, you know, the um, Costa Mesa, uh, no, Mesa Consolidated Water, um, and we also have the... Special Districts Liaison Meeting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And, but what's really great is we learn a lot. We learn, yes. I'm learning now what roads are going to be closed in the future because they're going to be doing major drain repairs. And uh, what was really impressive is that they're collaborative, you know, working together <coughs> to update so that we, you know, in future that we aren't, you know, in a disaster mode and having, um, you know, uh, things that we can't, you know, um, rely on, I guess, and so good for them. So they're working through that, and we shared what we were doing, you know, in our district, um, and then lots of good questions, and then we also had a lot of conversation about the homeless and what the city was doing, um, and I shared a little bit about Newport, um, city of Newport, because, you know, I went to a couple of their meetings, enough to be dangerous, because it is very, um, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not just political. It is, you know, what to do. And, and I know we all think about that. So um, they're doing, I believe they're, you know, both our cities are doing a good job at addressing it, you know, as best they can. We may have to go and <laughs> step into it because I know our, I couldn't be more proud of our district <clears throat> and how we support our children. So, and speaking of that, we also had our student advisory, um, superintendent student advisory. And so, Mrs. Snell, I have to report to you that um, we have two representatives from every high school, comprehensive high school, Back Bay, um, early college, and they are tasked at this point to bring back their top three um, items, which is a district-wide. They're a very collaborative group. Um, we host um, every month. Dr. Um, D'Agostino, you know, runs the meeting, and um, you know the students are, are just you know very confident, um, and they they really help facilitate the the beach cleanup and the kindness week. And we have T-shirts. So you get a free T-shirt, I believe, when you come um, on on Saturday, the twenty third. And um, and they just you know they're really putting their hearts and in, in actual you know commitments to it. And their number one concern always every year in the past has been food. Food you know on the campus is always the number one. Oh, right. <laughs> this year it was not. Whoa. And you know you know the number one as they went around is um, with student um, safety and wellness and their deep compassion and empathy for students is remarkable. And so I'm gonna be really curious. Um, also talking about the collegiate calendar, calendar you know, and um, less stress. And they talked about the parents, you know, parties and concerns and drugs, you know, um, those kind of things. So, you know, they're, they're a pretty dynamic group, so. And, and I did go to Reflections, and I always get yes, stuck do. at the very, because I love reading all of the, <laughs> matter of fact, all of the um, poems, and um, actually there was a couple that, you know, I was, I couldn't, you know, I mean, tearfully, you yes. know, talking about experiences, and my first question is, is this their personal experience, and so you always wonder, um, you know, if it's fiction or not, you know, so, because some of them are pretty bad. Um, but once I get through the reading, then, you know, you go into the art, and it's just amazing. And they had a whale there that I just, did you see the whale? Mm -hmm. I thought that was really good. And the whale had all the different things that we pick up, you know, in the ocean that isn't supposed to be in the ocean. So they just did a good, so I always encourage everyone. I always go towards the end, and um, so I can read it, and I can, so. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Mrs. Floor. Well, a um, couple things. Um, 
First of all, I want to, uh, again, I, I loved um, <coughs> the deep dive and I want to thank, but I want to give a special thanks and shout out to Mike Shaka who took my rant very graciously. <laughs> <laughs> Once mine. again of yeah. my uh, <laughs> rant about the inequity at T. Winkle and Ensign and their lack of a block scheduling. And so as a result, uh, kids don't get as many elective opportunities as uh, the two. Uh, as the um, high schools. As, as, as to them and 12s. And then you have the kids that are having support and intervention losing those electives because they're, they're in special classes. So I apologize to uh, Mike and thank him for, he knew it was coming though, so yeah. <laughs> he knows that. Um, but it was outstanding and it was a, a, um, great. And I would look, I, I also look forward to having more conversations about the Summer <coughs> Academy because I think this year was such a, was such a life-changing experience, especially for me to hear those kids talk about their culture and their roots and sharing their, um, their story. And I hope that that gets sort of embedded into, into their classes because it was just, that was just phenomenal in that. In that. Um, it's been a great, um, once again, our kids are phenomenal actors, actresses. Shar uh, uh, and I were, I went to the Crucible which is a heavy show to begin yeah, with. Really. It's like, oh, and long. okay, and long. <laughs> um, but it was fabulous at Costa Mesa. It was just outstanding. And then I um, had the opportunity to go to um, Corona Del Mar and see the eighth grade, um, A Show of Hands, which is oh, the I puppet one. Puppet. Um, darling, I took my two uh, little, little ones, uh, my eight and uh, six-year-old, and they actually, they actually got part of the jokes, and it was really very cute, and they loved it, and it was fabulous to see. And it was a huge cast, huge cast. It was, was just middle great. school? The middle school. She's so inclusive. And it's just, it was fabulous. Um, and then a uh, couple of things. We have got a real find in Angela um, Hess, mm -hmm. Alan Hess. I mean, we, uh, there were three of us who had the opportunity to see her um, in action, first time out with, um, she's going to be handling SARB, and so she was there. Just a phenomenal opportunity. Um, she's just going to be outstanding. Um, and I'm anxious to hear uh, how she's going to be talking about restructuring possibly and taking some of it back to the high schools as a SART process um, before. Um, I think Tim Tolls this said, it, said it best from uh, Estancia High School that we are just, I mean, it is, there's lots of kids, um, and we're just taking, we don't have enough time to deal, we're only dealing with 20, and start with elementary, and starting with, you know, needing to start with elementary. Um, so those are it, and then finally, I'll just do a brief prop, you've heard about enough crop, and I'll send you some more information, but we also got a new star, we just approved the hiring of Lisa Snowden, Lisa Snowden um, is a uh, former police chief, Dave Snowden's daughter-in-law. Um, she was at uh, ROP for a long time, and she is coming over to support um, college and career in our district. And I'm really sad to see her go at ROP, but I'm really thrilled that she's coming, coming to, to us <laughs> and not to another district. <laughs> um, so that's um, we have a real uh, a real winner in that one. So it's really sad for us, though. Um, and I really appreciate the support of, of the ROP. They are, they are doing phenomenal work, and most of our classes are now, I would say, what, 50%, 60% of our classes are A through G? Um, so we're, they're, they're high-end classes, so we're really excited about that. And then I'll let Char, and then we've got a, right. we, have, we, have, we have a share. We're we're, no, it's not a show. <laughs> It's not a show. A um, share, but I said. A share. Oh, we do have a share. It's a okay. circus. Individually. It's a circus. I went on and on, too. So. Um, this was my, I, I was asked by Oasis to represent Newport Mesa at the Oasis, which is a senior center in Newport Beach. And for anyone who's interested, you don't have to live in Newport Beach, and you also don't have to be a senior, but it's a really wonderful opportunity. My job, I was told, is just to tell people how great Oasis is, and I don't have any problem with that because I'm hoping to go see Hamilton with them and, and they have <laughs> courses. I'm hoping to put my husband to work teaching one so I can know where he's at for a few nights and then he can be busy. And so it's, it's a really wonderful place and they do great things, so I check off that, I did that. Um, I w happened, this time it happened that there were two wonderful events 
that involved Sonora Elementary, and one was their Veterans Day celebration, which there are many Veterans Day celebrations. Raise your hand if there was one in your area, so it's got to be all of us, right. Um, we, the most touching part is when we have veterans there to celebrate, and it's grandma, and when they're introduced, it's not just rent a veteran for the day, it's, it's Billy's grandmother and Mary's aunt and uncle, and it's just so touching, and one of the things they do at Sonora, which I kudos to the veterans for sitting through it, is every class passes by and gives each veteran a thank you note or a flower or something, and when you do the whole school, that's a long stand. And I'm always impressed by the first grade class that has memorized the preamble to the Constitution. Because when you do it in first grade, if mom and dad are smart, they'll have their kids talk about it so that they remember forever. The good old memorization things are kind of fun. And so I really enjoyed that. And then last night I was at City Hall because Sonora was selected to be the artist school in residence for this quarter. And they had a reception. They had an outstanding um, turnout. There were over 30 people there. And in addition to that, they also have replaced, although I really did like the things they had in conference room A, um, which showed the history of Costa Mesa. And now they're, they're demonstrating some adult art in the Costa Mesa conference room. And it just goes to show that the city of Costa Mesa, who on their logo says city of the arts, walks the talk. So if you know of an elementary school that would like that in Costa Mesa, sorry, Newport Beach, um, please tell your school's principal to contact City Hall so that they can share the wealth. Okay, and that being said, Mrs. Floor and I, oh, ta -da! I, 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 what? I didn't do DLAC, I was waiting for the after. Oh, oh but you heard, what, well, do you want me when I, I can do it after. When I introduced it, I said, please give your board reports at the same time. Yes, but I have it written down. Right there. Oh, go ahead, DLAC. We'll do ours last. Okay. DLAC. Um, we had our first DLAC meeting of the year two Thursdays ago, uh, Wednesdays ago, and they, we covered um, needs assessments for them to review from last year. So the parents look through and they're going to be sharing those um, at their school sites. And then it was a fun opportunity for people who want to be on the board of DLEC this year. There were four or five people that stood up to be the president or parliamentarian. Wow, nice. So they That's will be lot. voting next time. Um, and then the last piece, too, that was covered was um, the trail to for um, resolution. So if people have an issue that comes up at their school, the process, and so um, they would be equipped to share that at their school's EWAC meetings. <laughs> Fabulous. Okie dokie. Um, so Mrs. Floor, so the weeks, walking spree is over. Seven weeks ago, yes. So on September 30th, of course, before September 30th, I issued a challenge to the board to join me and walk our schools. <laughs> and yes, we got that. I told you. Do I only walk on vacation? <laughs> Char did jump in and join me, and we have walked, um, and she'll give, a, give you the thing. Um, but also Michelle did on her own, mm -hmm. and so did uh, Karen on her own, and we have those numbers also. I have stats. So we have stats, but we, we did do some observations, and so we had great time walking. We solved... We solved so many problems. We solved so many problems. Oh, and Jeff, we spent the entire budget while we were out there, because we'd walk by a school and go, well, we should build a building here. This would be great. And so, so, yeah. yeah, so we... And we also looked at neighborhoods, and we got ideas for... Windows, yeah. landscaping. Oh, yeah. We got it all. Oh, I could put that in my yard. Yeah, we had. Yeah, we had a great time. Um, we're not we'll, we'll I move bringing... to adjourn. <laughs> but we do, I second it. No. We do have no. some Please. numbers. We're no. trying to get out before no. nine. We I do promise. Have some numbers. <laughs> my part's short. We don't care. My... No. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Just you wait. It's our black. Just you wait. Here's the here's the deal. All together, our, the goal of Walking Spree was for the district to walk 250 million steps. When I first saw it, I thought it was 250,000. I figured I could do this. We could do this. Then I read closer. Those zeros really add up. As a board, we walked 1,870,990 steps. Wow. And when it, yes, thank you. And, and, it, we ranged as far as the winners, or the not as 
I'm a winner, even though <clears throat> from number 73, Ms. Bartow, you were number 73 in the district, to Ms. Mrs. Yelsey, you were 180. Yes. I was 239, which I was pretty jazzed. Oh, come and on. Mrs. Fleur was 278. Yeah. So we're all at under 300, so that's excellent. I have no idea what we qualified for. They let us know. Their, the bottom line was the district <laughs> walked as a whole. You get a plaque. That's I it. qualified for the fact that I'm, my personal goal was to walk more than 6,000 steps when I walked, and that's we had great. days of over 10, so that's good. And to selfishly yeah. say, I'm doing this because I get to walk Washington, D.C. with my youngest granddaughter, and <laughs> last I time I was finished. at the end of every line, and I just refused to be at the end this year, so I'm preparing. We're not finished yet. We're walking every school. That's right. We have, Mrs. Floor and I have currently walked 24 of the 35 district sites. We were going to walk tomorrow, but it's raining. Oh, darn. Um, we walk sometimes with other board members. We walk sometimes with the principals. But we decided personally we're not going to stop. We're still going to keep so going. We've, we've given ourselves till winter break. Now, we thought we could do it by the end of November, but there's rain, so we have to wait. And, and Miss Anderson, Friday we're walking from Estancia to Whittier to Victoria to Wilson. So if you want to join us on any part of it, let us know. We'll text, just text us and say, where are you? <laughs> because, yeah, because, and which, just so you know how hard Mrs. Flora and I have walked, sometimes we've walked to a restaurant, had breakfast, and then kept walking and come back. <laughs> Sometimes our goal was if we walk all the way around, then let's walk with Killybrook. We walked with the principal for half of the time that we walked. Then we walked to IHOP. Then we walked back to Killybrook. But see, I, I but we still walked. We still got steps in. No, but do I have to measure the steps? Uh -huh. Okay. I still with move that, to adjourn. I wanted to end on a positive note. I move for adjournment. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Well, in memory. Oh, oh, oh. I move to adjourn this meeting in the memory of Linda Sneen, a fabulous woman, an excellent parent, a wonderful wife, and a dedicated, devoted school board member. And volunteer. And volunteer extraordinaire. Yes, she was. Now. Second. Mrs. Snell seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. We're out before you. Yay.